You guys have been waiting on this one, and we've been bringing you a lot of fresh and enlightening content and diverse content over here on Bro Sanchez TV, and we've been striving to get you the best guests and the best speakers on that me personally and my brother Vinny scouts as well. And if you guys have been enjoying that, smash that like button, hit that share button, and you know that today's stream will be no different. We will have another epic bill here with my brother, none other than Divine being the author of the Hark book. Let's clap it up. We, we want to clap it up for the book before I bring him his mic in and I'm going to let him reintroduce himself and, and just start and do whatever he want to do with the mic once he get it. But a lot of my people, they put me on to him through the Killer Priest show. So let's drop a bomb for Killer Priest. And he did a great job over there. Uh, the video got some good numbers and he, he basically... He, he 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 lit the show up, man. Caught my attention. I had to reach out to the brother. And, and uh, yeah, you know, the brother, that's one thing that stands out is the brother's artwork, which he going to talk about that, too. You know what? No further ado. I'm talking too much. Let me let me turn this brother on over, man. This is a young brother, too, by the way, y'all. Let's drop a bump. Un unmute your mic, brother. You got it. What's up, everyone? How you doing, brother? How you doing, my brother? Welcome. I'm doing amazing. I'm here in Hawaii, just landed a few days ago. I've been setting myself up in my little apartment. I'm in, a, I'm in my brother Embodiment Celestial's apartment right now. Embodiment Celestial is the one who, uh, he's another TikToker. So uh, let me show you how I started, how I created this book, which I shouted you out so many times in it, brother. You, mm. Santos Bonacci, all the other truth seekers out there, we, we it's a compilation of my research and you and you and Santos Bonacci are the top two ones up there. Cause you guys mm -hmm. passionate. Mm -hmm. You said, you said, uh, you said a heart has compassion and earth spells heart and compassion has compass. So you follow your heart, you follow the compass to the North pole. That was beautiful. And on my cover, I have the flat earth with the North pole and, uh, the quote by you, I, I drew a picture of your face and next to it, it says there is no South pole. So it's like, you know, one of your main things, it's like, yeah. what's, because it's not it's it's you can't go there we're not allowed so unless we can prove it but anyways uh so so what happened was i had all this research and just uh in in notes it was like a a note version of just comp compilation of of work and it wasn't like a coincise book because it was many different subjects many different religions so it reads like a textbook from school like a school science book but anyways uh i was releasing it for free i was just telling people how uh because it was amazing to me when I figured out that there wasn't actually five vowels, A-E-I-O-U. There's actually seven. A-E-I-Y-O-W-U. A -E 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 -A -A -U. And so basically, the uh, that, that's as above, so below. There's seven vowels. There's seven musical notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si. And then there's seven luminaries well there's seven wandering stars those are the seven visible luminaries without a telescope there's obviously uranus neptune pluto but you can only see the seven with your eyes mm -hmm. but so so that to me was so significant as above so below because it says it in the bible it says it in the quran it says it in uh, hermeticism the hermetic principles so it's everywhere it's literally universal so i was like yeah syncretism if you don't know syncretism you're just limited and, and santo says it beautifully the holy science is to become whole again because we come from all the information in the universe. That's what we are, pure information. And we are born and we forget things. So our, our mission is to remember everything, to recollect all the information. Because that's, that's where we return is to pure information. So, so the, Santo says he, he wants to feel complete and not be missing anything when he returns. Because that's how you return. The only way to return is to gather all the information, whether it's through enlightenment, mushrooms, ayahuasca, peyote whatever it is or even just through hard research listening to your videos bro sanchez that's the same as taking an ayahuasca trip <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. so basically uh, I, I was on tiktok and i i blew up i was just talking people people just people loved it and so uh zachariah embodiment celestial he had a website where he put it he put the pdf version on his website and we we're like you know what let's just make a hard copy because the pdf was like 
246 pages and it's going to cost 200 to, to print out each one of those pages for a dollar in color. So it just costed too much. So uh, we made the book and it's only a, a $60 compared to 200 where you had to print out every single page and put it in a binder. So Zach's website and my research together, we just, we're, we're like an unstoppable team. And now, now I'm on here with you. I'm live with you now. So now this is what we do. We're, we're, uh, yeah, go ahead, brother. Well, let me ask you this. Is Zach the owner of bookbaby.com? No, we use that website okay. to publish the book. They're, they're the publishers. All right. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so what, what actually technology was it that uh, allowed you to, to reduce the price that much? Also, I want to say to people, if you want the book, it's, the link is in the top of the video description. But let me go ahead and also pin that to the top of the chat room as well. And I can, if you want to ask Embodiment Celestial that, he's in the other room. So after the show, I can have him sit down for like five minutes or so and you can talk to him. Well, well you know what? Let's do that after the show because that's basically me being nosy for information. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm going to need that for my book, actually. So, you know. <laughs> for sure, brother. Yeah. Yeah, keep, 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 keep okay. giving them the knowledge, brother. You got it. All right. I'm, so, I'm, so yeah, guys. So, look, uh, I, I like that you had Eric Dollard on yesterday. Eric Dollard, uh, I have a quote from him where he says, you can't understand field theory, electric field theory, without knowing what counter space is. If you don't know what counter space is, you know nothing. Counter space is what everything is. It's, it's what the absolute is. It's pure, it's ether. Ether, counter space, subspace, whatever you want to call it. It's, uh, it's, the, um, it's, it's the source point of all creation where everything comes from. So it's, it's the, uh, everything in the world that, that is audible, visible, and tangible has, it takes up space. So everything that is spatial comes from that which is counter spatial. It, it, it doesn't take up any space. So counter space or subspace, it means it doesn't take up any space at all. Everything else takes up space like, like can, this. Can, yeah, go can, ahead. Can we say that counter space is that which creates space? Exactly, yeah. It, it's the, it's the non-Cartesian, non-physical nexus from which all things spring from and return to. That's what it is. That's a great way to sum it up as well. That's a quote from Ken Wheeler, the world's leading magnetrician. Even though he's uh, mm -hmm. he he doesn't he doesn't say uh, he's not a flat earther per se, but I would say he 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 makes you know he would say like he's it's a, a globe. He says it's a globe, obviously. But I like to tell people we can we stand on the shoulders of giants. So I take in all the information about magnetism from Ken Wheeler. But since he, he I, I would proudly say he's the world's leading magnetrician, but he's not the world's leading astronomer or astrologer. So, or or, co or what, cosmologist. In, in exactly. That. So when you want to learn about magnetism, go to him. You want to learn about astrology, go to Santos. You want to learn about geology and cosmology, go to bro Sanchez. And, and, and appreciate that. And you know what else, man? I'm glad that you're showing him that because I had Eric Dollard on, who's obviously an enemy of flat earth. Like he hates it. And I still was able to tell him, like, I learned so much from you about the luminaries and the nature of the heavens. And not that he just was a master in dealing with the stars. He'll tell you it's a mystery to him. It's just that his way of explaining the sun coming from an electrician's perspective opened me up to a new way of looking at stuff in the sky. And that new way of looking at stuff in the sky translates to a new way of looking at everything so i'm just showing people you know how to eat the fish and spit out the bones you seem to do that well man tell them how old you is by the way man that matters to me yeah i just turned 26 and my son is seven 26 um, years old yeah so uh yeah uh basically santos bonacci uh he said he said it beautifully he said uh the sun is a second, it's a secondary source of primary energy. It's a converter. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, that's, yeah, that's what it, it is. That lines exactly up with what Eric Dollar teach about it as well. You know, you was bringing up uh, your magnifying glass behind the scenes when we was talking about this good old Mary Jane, right? And uh, yep. 
and I'm gonna let you re-explain that, but you was the concept of a magnifying glass of how we the sun, we know it's a converter of energy, is not the source of light that we see right there. But let's exactly. say let's say it is, right? And we can actually take a magnifying glass, r- reflect that magnify and reflect that light source through the lens and create another light source on the other side of the lens. That little miniature life source would still bring in the power of the sun and in this case into this lower dimension. Cause when I when the light of the sun pass through your lens and cross through that lens, that's like light passing through a event horizon. It's gonna transform to some different but still be somewhere the same. You know how we use that and to me that's what the sun is. It's it's like the little dot we see from that magnifying glass is not really the real sun. It's a projected and magnified version through the atmosphere. Yeah, I like to call it a focal point. Just like, like the that. hourglass, uh, when you, I mean, the magnifying glass, when I burn my cannabis, I, I use the focal point and you're just focusing it to a point. And that's what the pyramids in Egypt were. Uh, the, the focal point, it's like, it makes an hourglass shape. Because it goes to a point and then it spreads out after that point and it makes like an X, right? The, uh, the focusing of it. So basically what the pyramids did, they're designed pyramidal because the energy is supposed to, uh, said that there was a capstone. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason it's, it's not fully pointy and requires a capstone is because when you make a magnet pyramidal, it has to look like an Aztec pyramid. If you make it too pointy, it's not going to be as powerful. It's more powerful when you make sure it's, it's flat at the top. And so he, he had one of those in his hand. It's a pyramidal magnet. So I said, wow, yeah, they, they use that geometry just to literally, the, the Earth's magnetic field will go up those corners and it will focus it like a magnifying glass. So the tip of the pyramid is where the focused oh, energy goes to. Hold on for one second. I'm sorry about that. When we no seem to be having tech issues. We haven't had tech issues in a while. Oh, there's uh, a lag. Yeah. And... I apologize for that. Um, let me see see here if it's going to pick back up. I don't want you to be talking and uh, it's, it's not transmitting. Forgive me on this. We might have to, if push come to shove, restart it. If, and the good <laughs> thing about this is that it happened in 15 minutes in, so at least it ain't in the... Hey guys, how are we doing in the chat room? Drop a one. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna let him continue. He they said we back. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, let him continue. Go ahead, go ahead. You got it. So it's all about amplifying and magnifying the Earth's magnetic field because energy can't be created or destroyed. We can just focus it or disperse it. It's like concentration, focusing or spreading out. But that energy is always there. So. Uh, so basically, when I, what, what we were talking about before we, uh, in, the, in the, you know, in the back room, what we were saying was, uh, I was telling you how I was smoking weed out of blunt wraps and tobacco and backwoods, like every day, and my tonsils would hurt every now and then. So I told my mom, like, I want to get them removed. And uh, I, that's before I even knew that our tonsils is, is that's your lymph nodes. So you don't want to get rid of those. But basically, my mom was like, it's, it's, the, it's the weed. It's because you're smoking. I'm like, no, nah, people smoke weed and weed heals you. Like, I, I, I listened to Dr. Sebi smoke from when he was 14 till he was 80. And, uh, you know, he cured AIDS. So I was like, it's, it's healing. But my throat was so messed up. And so when I, when I stopped smoking blunt wraps, because I realized that tobacco is not, tobacco doesn't, tobacco, I just want to say, uh, the, it's the cannabis that heals. Uh, you have an endocannabinoid system, but you don't have a tobacco system. That's what I would say. Just to be factual, I know our ancestors smoked tobacco. I just want to say we don't have a tobacco system, but you do have an endocannabinoid system, which means you have endocannabinoid receptors in your brain. That's why when a, when a, a child has a seizure or any age person has a seizure and, and they're twitching and they can't control their body, you have to put a wallet on top of their tongue so that they don't swallow their tongue because they can't control anything. So what you do is you put uh, two drops of cannabis oil underneath their tongue and it, connect, it, it will get absorbed by your lymph nodes that are in your tonsils. And what happens is 50% of the time within two minutes, a person having a seizure would start regaining their motor functions after putting cannabis oil under the tongue because your endocannabinoid system, 
regulates every other 12 body systems or all the other 11 ones. So it, it controls your muscle systems. That's how you, re, you regain motor functions. Uh, when you're obese, it reduces appetite. When you're anorexic and skinny, it gives you an appetite. When, you're ins when you have uh, insomnia and you can't sleep at night, it helps you sleep. And when you can't, and it actually stimulates your mind to wake you up. So cannabis does everything. It literally regulates all your body systems. And I think that's so beautiful, but we're smoking it the wrong way. We, we, we should smoke with a magnifying glass and a bong because you're getting fire, earth, air when you breathe it in and water in the bong. So you're getting earth, air, fire, water. And when you let out that weed, you have creativity, which is ether flowing in you, through you and out of you. So you literally get all five elements when you're smoking cannabis and Santos Bonacci calls it the tree of life. So I just want to let you guys know if, if you want to like try, that. yeah, if you want to Mac, see my book is called Hearth, but R and L are interchangeable. So it's the health book, Hearth book. So basically I teach how to maximize human potential, body, mind, and soul. I, I know I'm tatted everywhere and I have, my hair is dyed. You don't want to dye your hair because your hair will die. It's an extension of your nervous system. And you don't want to get tattoos so much because the tattoo ink consists of zinc, iron, lead, cadmium, chromium, and titanium. So, so I'm that, aware so, of this. So that means you ain't getting no more tattoos. You capped out, huh, bro? I might get, I want to get Buddha sucked up and yeah. skinny on my back. <laughs> but, but the point is because uh -huh. it's like I'm sacrificing myself for, for you guys. Like, you know, I, I did it so you don't have to do it, uh, you know. Um, but it, people just get random stuff. On their, on their body, all this is symbols. Like I'm the walking book of Eli, someone called me. And it's just, it's so important and it's much needed. And the tattoo ink is on the surface of my skin. I know a little bit goes into your blood, but the point is like, I just wanna, if I have to fall for everyone else to not fall, I will do that. And I, it sounds crazy, but I'm just passionate about this. You know what, that, brother? What you saying that because you're in your 20s right now. When, you're right. You, when you get a little older, you're going to be like, man, I got tattoos. I like my tattoos and fuck that shit. If you get tattoos, <laughs> get your tattoo. Because guess what, yo? I'm telling you right now. I don't care if we got tattoos or not or if you dye your hair or not. Your, the, your heart and how much of a merciful and compassionate being you are going to dictate where you go when you leave here. And you can have a bunch of tats and be a good person and you're going to be okay. You can have no tats at all and be a piece of shit. And according to the Hindu, you're going to have to relive your karma and work out your, your neg negative heart and stuff. So, yeah, brother, That's don't, right. don't worry about that, man. You're <laughs> doing good work. Your body is a doggone extension of your book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, you show up prepared to teach with with your with everything you need on your body, like I you know the sense. So I really dig that. That's unique. You don't see that. Continue. You got it. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, they they burned the Library of Alexandria because they bur they burned the books because they they want to get rid of the knowledge. So I put it on my body because they can't get rid of you know they're gonna have to kill me to get rid of my book to kill the knowledge. So um, that's what it is. Uh, there's a movie called 415 Fahrenheit with uh, Michael B. Jordan, the guy from Creed. Uh, it's called 415 Fahrenheit and he's a firefighter and it takes place in the future where he has to go around and, and burn all the Bibles and books. If you haven't seen that movie, uh, you could check it out, but Michael B. Jordan is a firefighter. And instead, he said, he said uh, there was a guy who said, oh, the firefighters back in the day used to put out fires. The firefighters in the future, they start fires. You're getting paid by the government to go knock on the doors of people to get rid of their books. So I don't want that to happen. I'm not trying to speak it into existence, but these are huge movies right now where they're talking about getting rid of books. That, that listen, speaking of books, let them know. Go ahead now and go into this release of energy. Uh, I saw on your the clip they put out with the killer priest. Break down to, to, to the people out there that often what we're not studying is not energy but the release of energy am i am i in your mind with this one am i with That's you right, on that? go ahead cook to that with so my look, brother yeah if you can show my screen here this yeah. is the uh this is the flat earth and the, the whole earth it generates from the center that's genesis that's the generation point that's the g spot that's mother earth that's the center that's the north pole the garden of eden so basically 
all comes from the center. The uh, it's the in India they call it they they, they have Brahma sitting on a lotus flower mm -hmm. because because the center of the earth is is like the where the seeds are and then everything else the ice wall would be like the petals. So we're we're on the face of a sunflower or the face of a lotus. Yeah, man, that's what that AE map is. All exactly. of these time zones are the petals of a uh, sunflower, there you go. but time is is stemming out from what the stem, the the, the point, the circle yep. in the man. You you hey, go ahead, man. I'm listening. And, and so look, so uh, Vishnu lays down on a coil of snakes, and out of his belly button is that stem, and that's where Brahma is sitting on. So it's telling you. The navel point of the earth is, is the North Pole. It's like your belly button. So the North Pole would be the belly button of Vishnu. And then the, the torus field that shoots out of it would be the stem. And then Brahma would be sitting at the top. That's Polaris. So that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And as above, so below, we got one of these at the top, one at the bottom. There we go. So now one thing I wanted to uh, uh, bring up was... Uh, where do you stand as far as a source creator? Do you do construct, subscribe to any religions or what's your idea? Oh. Uh -huh. uh, all creation comes from a source point. So yes, there is a source point of all creation. You can call it a creator. I would just say, well, yeah, it's not a man or a woman. It's just, uh, it's the creator. What is the creator? It's, it's counter space, ether. It's a... Mm -hmm. uh, it's the source point of all creation and it's everywhere, but nowhere because it's counter space. So I want to give an example. People say, what do you mean everywhere, but nowhere? Do you, so th this is what I learned um, uh, just on my YouTube. Uh, what is it called? My YouTube travels, just going through the, my, my research. So there's a guy named Robert Sapolsky and he went to Stanford University. He was a professor. What he said was, and he actually talks about emergence and complexity. See, we have it wrong. We say we evolved from the ground up, but the opposite creationism says from intelligence, we come down. Mm. So yes, the source point of all creation is pure information and intelligence. Everything else is either reduced in size and or everything else is either simplified or reduced in size, but with the same complexity. So when I'm looking at you, you are God reduced in size with the same complexity. You're, you're intelligent. You're just, it's like we are all 24 carrot gold specks of dust and and the source point of our creation would be the gold brick that we come from so you're not 10k or 5k you're still 24 carats you're pure gold but you're just not the entire brick you're just a little speck of it like we're all drops of the ocean but you're not just a drop of the ocean you are the entire ocean in a drop that's what it is everything is fractal fractal just means fractured versions of the main one but it's all yeah go ahead and, and, and basically what you're explaining is if you take a crumb of infinity, that little bitty crumb of infinity is still equivalent to the big old piece you broke it from because infinity and infinity, it, it, the amount of infinity is the same no matter the dimensions of infinity because it has <laughs> no dimensions. So a, crumb, a dust grain that was broken from infinity is still infinity. You didn't, you, we didn't reduce its number. You do. So I get yeah. it totally with you. And, and it's like this, it, it's called mnemonic growth in humans. So your organs stay the same shape, but they just get bigger in size uh, when you get older. So it's not like you get bigger and your brain stays small and your eyes stay little and your heart stays little. Your heart gets big with your body. Your brain gets big with your body. So that's all it is. It's just reduced, but with the same complexity. And another thing is um, the... What I learned about Robert Sapolsky, like he explains creationism and emergence. So when we exist, it's funny because exist has the same letters as exit, because to exist is to exit from counter space. We actually appeared and emerged from the source mm, point. The exit is from Eden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So uh, Robert Sapolsky said, uh, he said, look, your circulatory system, which is your veins that carry blood from your heart to your entire body. Without your veins, you would not be able to, to get oxygen to all your cells in your body. All of your cells need oxygen. So how does your circulatory system, which is only 5% of the body's mass, how does your circulatory system with all your nerves, how does it feed all your cells and give it oxygen? Well, that, that's kind of like everywhere but nowhere. You, literally, 
Your circulatory system is only 5% of your body's mass. It only takes up 5% of your body's space, but yet it feeds all your cells. Well, this is, this is the answer. How does your circulatory system do that? Because every cell in your body has to be within five cells of a uh, blood vessel. So every cell in your body is within reach of a blood vessel. So therefore your blood vessel doesn't have to touch each cell. Each cell just has to be in the perimeter near a blood vessel and it will pick up the oxygen because it's not particles. It's like frequency. You just have to be within the range. Let, let me, I'm a, now the way I plan this interview today, right? I said, now this is a young brother who's a, he's, he's a young guru, right? Cause at your age, I was not talking electromagnetism and shit. So <laughs> I'm telling you. So what I said was, I want to pick his brain about a lot of different things because we all are like deep with the uh, magnetism and stuff, even though we're going to skip back and forth from that because it ties in. I want to ask you a question. Any question you don't want to answer, you don't have to answer. When we talk about human origins, because I want to pick your brain in ways other platforms did not do when you was on them platforms and, and get some exclusive information from you on, on mine. Can you explain to me how you think everything unfolded from nothing and, and, and particularly go into what we call human races, black folk, white folks. And some people think that there's some sort of spiritual perks or like some groups are better than other groups. Cause you know, God gave them certain abilities or, you know, mm -hmm. you got this in all groups. Talk about that, my young brother. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's talk about the chosen, the chosen people, the 144,000. People say there's only 144,000 and you have to be a Hebrew Israelite. Well, if you believe those 12 children of Jacob existed, it, sa it says in Genesis that Judah is a lion's whelp. So Judah is Leo. It says Simon and Levi are brethren. They're Gemini. It says Dan is a serpent. That's uh, Scorpio. And it says... Uh, It, it, Genesis literally says all the 12 tribe, all the 12 sons of Jacob are just the zodiac signs. So there's not 12 tribes. That means none of us are the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Issachar. Those are the 12 zodiacs. So the, the 144,000 in India, when you add up the chakras, the, the bottom petal has four, then you have six, then you have 10, then you have 16. I mean, then you have 12 and then 16. When you add up the first five chakras, it's 48. The next chakra is the, the third eye chakra, which is two petals. So when you multiply 48 times two, you get 96. 96 plus 48 again is 144. And then when you multiply it times the crown chakra, the thousand petal lotus, you get 144,000. So wow, 144,000 144, go to heaven just means you bring up your energy from the root to the head, which is heaven. Hold and that's on, heaven. wait, wait, wait a goddamn minute now. Hold on, Becky, come on, wait a minute. Drop this young man some bombs. Drop this man the bomb, goddammit. Yo, I told y'all this was going to be bananas, man. Hey, man, keep on blessing them with the Jews, bro. We listening, man. That was deep as, hey, that was deep AF, bro. Yup. So, yeah, uh, Santos taught me that. You add the chakras and you get 144,000. That's the thousand, thousand petal lotus at the top. Salutes so, to Santos Bonacci. <laughs> that's right. And so um, he actually sent me his address. I'm going to send him my book so I can get an autograph and send back. And I want to send you a book. I'm going to send you two. Oh, oh, you yeah. bought one, but I'm going to send you another one so you can sign it and give it back to me, brother, so I can brag about how I got bro Sanchez to sign my book. I got you, man. <laughs> Enough said. Hey, I got you, bro. Use a beast, bro. So what else? Um, yeah, so if you think whites come from blacks or blacks come from whites, then you all probably think polar bears come from black bears and black bears come from polar bears. You think bananas come from strawberries or apples come from mangoes. It's a diversity. It's infinite. And... Uh, that's what it is. And here's one thing. People say, well, if, if, you're, if you're white, you have a hard time on earth, so you're not natural. You're not from here. Well, if you're melanated, heavily melanated, you have an extra filter around your body. So you're going to get less sun if you go to the North Pole. So people with less melanin have a better time away from the sun because they have less of a penetration for the sun to get through. It just easily, they can get that sun, that, even if it's, even if it's not so hot. Let me throw you something. The net, you, you know how you debunked the globe earth and became a flat earther? Mm -hmm. Guess what? One day you're going to debunk melanin and you're going to become what's called a no racer. 
That means you're going <laughs> to realize racists don't exist because the shit. I'm already it, there. Uh, okay, so go ahead. You got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. And we're just humans. Uh, there, there's actually no black or white. Nobody's the color of a pupil and nobody's the color of the but, sclera, which is the white part of your eye. Now, I will say this. When I use the words black, white and all of that, I'm using a political term. Of course, we have to because mm -hmm. that's the only way people would understand because they're programmed that way. But it's basically dark and light. So, yeah. Um, no, like I know I know how you have debates like uh, about the out of Africa theory. And, that, and that's. I agree with you. Um, it's like. A, you can't say that. The. the Anybody who studies the human body will have the knowledge that the Egyptians had. Anybody, so the Egyptians didn't own astrology because they don't own the stars. They don't own the science of anatomy because they don't own the body. If you have a body and you dissect yourself, you can study yourself. If you study the stars and, and you log them, you become an astro logger. So the minds were astrologers. They, so, so nobody invented it or like created it. They just studied it. We're all just studiers. Either you're a studier or not. So um, we're, we're all super intelligent, every human. And, and when people say we have souls and you don't, there's only certain people who have souls. We're all born with a soul and you can only lose your soul. Uh, oh, nobody's yeah. nobody's deep. born. I, nobody's born without a soul. Like I would say Bill Gates wasn't born evil. Like he wasn't born a little baby with the, with a vaccine in his hand, ready to jab other babies. He was he was just a bit. He was a baby that grew up in an evil household. Because if we, if I, if my parents were were to adopt Bill Gates, he'd be next to me right here talking about flat Earth. <laughs> All I'm saying is, it's uh, we. When I was in kindergarten, I had a room full of Asians. Uh, People from all over the world. My kindergarten classroom was multicolored, and none of us were. None of no one was racist. I didn't know racism until high school, brother. So basically, we're all uh, hate. All this stuff is just limiting, and it's uh, limiting, and it's unnatural. If you want to be natural and unlimited, it's love. Love is a unifying force. So we have to unify all the religions, and and not not just what I'm saying is you can't just say. If you only read the Bible, you're going to be limited to that only, which is what only 2000 years of history. You have to read all these scriptures to, to accumulate the knowledge if you actually want to be knowledgeable. And that's why it's just I don't tell people you have to do this. You have to do that. I just say if you want to maximize your human potential, mind, body and soul and accumulate as much as information as possible, then you have to broaden your horizons, as my, my brother Embodiment Celestial would say. That's 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 it. Let me let me ask you this too, because I'm gonna skip around with you. You're doing a good job, man, and the, and the numbers are showing. So check this out. Uh, I'm saying you are doing a good job with these questions, man. You're very thorough in your answers. Are Thank you, brother. yeah, are atoms real? And explain atoms to us in the, in from your understanding. Okay. So atoms are. All, all physicality is sustained by motion. So anything physical, audible, tangible is only sustained by motion. If it doesn't move, it returns to its primordial state, which is rest, which is stillness. You, you can't see it or uh, think of it like this. My hand is, uh, if you have a thermo scanner, which is like a, it, it, it checks the temperature of whatever you're looking at in a screen. Yeah. So basically if it's, if it's warm, it'll glow. And if it's cold, it'll stay blue. So if, if I'm in a room and I'm still and it's cold, then the whole room looks like it's blue. You wouldn't even tell I'm in there. But once I start doing jumping jacks and moving, I will start glowing like a star in that room. So all physicality, anything visible, audible, or tangible, anything that glows with light, it's just the movement. When I move my hands, they start glowing. So what is light? It's just movement. If I stop moving my hands, it turns blue again and it doesn't glow in a thermo scanner. So what I'm saying is all physicality is sustained by motion. That means the atom is not, they, they even tell us that. They say atoms have electrons. Every atom has one or two or three electrons. If it's hydrogen, it has one proton, one neutron, one electron. If it's carbon, six protons, six electrons. If it's oxygen, eight electrons. But the electrons are always spinning around the atom. And if the atoms don't spin around it, then the atom will just, basically, it will shrink down to its nucleus, which means it, it goes back to its plane of inertia, which is infinitely thin, so you can't see it. So basically, Atoms are just whirlpools of energy, and they, uh, 
they, they, they come out of the top and into the bottom and they, they do this motion. If you can see it on the screen yeah. there, but uh, that it's a whirlpool of energy, brother. That's why they say it, it's true. If you ask any scientist or physicist, you'll ask them, can we predict or calculate the, the momentum or the position of an electron? They say, no, we can never predict the position of electron because there is not one electron. It's a, it's a whole whirlpool of energy. Let me put it this way. Imagine a water hose. When you point it straight up, what happens to the water? It spreads out and makes an umbrella, doesn't it? Yeah. Like in, some, in some cases. Well, that's what it is. It's not, it's not one electron. It's an umbrella of energy. It's a whirlpool. It shoots out the top, like coming out of the hose, and it spreads around it, making an umbrella, and then it gets sucked back in and it recycles. Let, that's why you can't predict it. Let, let, me, let me share something with you. <clears throat> Here is what's called a holographic human. Now, this is what they're engineering for the near future. Um, they're saying, you know, they're you, they already doing it now with rappers and celebrities. Like here in Vegas, they got Tupac hologram, Michael Jackson. These things get better and better every year, divine being, to where it's almost at a point in the near future where you won't be able to tell a hologram from a real human. I can't make this up if you follow the tech sites. So here's a, a, an right. exa a example of what the technology is. And I, the reason I asked you about atoms and you were talking about a fractal code, the way that this hologram is generated is, is that like what you were just saying, bro, that it expands that way. Each of these rays of light becomes a pixel or a dot. And each one of those is helped make an entire big hologram. But each one of those dots is a small version it's a fractal code. It's a miniature copy of this big giant. So you got a bunch of small Ta copies making a big one. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to give you that. And, and look, that even even though that's a hologram, they're going to use six, seven, and eight G to make those actually like you can feel it. So you can actually high five the hologram and feel it when you touch it. Yeah. So if you go to, if you go to YouTube, type in Emerge Wave One, and you will see what I'm talking about. They already have these. You know what? You've been on it, ain't you, man? That's what I. Hey, yo. Right. My, this is, yeah. my next book is going to be Transhumanism Futures, How to Avoid It. Navigating yeah, and Avoiding Transhuman Futures. And you starting young. There you go. There it is. That yeah, one right there. Yeah, bro. He going to have that. a whole <laughs> discography soon. Is it the first one here? Yep, that's it, brother. All right, I got you. Let me cut. Do I got to play the audio? Yeah, play well, yep, well, It's yep. all good. Today, we're getting a firsthand experience with the Emerge Wave 1 a brand new accessory for virtual reality and Quest headsets that gives you a bare hand touch experience creating tactile effects that you can feel directly on your hands. Using ultrasound technology, it's one of the first devices that allows you to physically feel the metaverse without having to hold a controller or put on a glove. We got a chance to meet with the Emerge founding team so we could try out so you the can, Wave you can pause 1 it now. Me, so. Uh... Basically, what's happening is this device, it's shooting out ultrasound waves and it's you can feel it. Yeah. So so so, so these hol that's kind of what atoms are. It get, it's the appearance of solidity, but it only appears to be solid because so it's like all appearing to be solid matter is actually non-solid energy vibrating at a certain frequency. Yes. One more time. All appearing to be solid matter is actually non-solid energy vibrating at a certain frequency. That's what it is. And, what and what gives it a, and what's happening by it being non-physical, what gives it a visual appearance, just like these virtual reality goggles, is that reality is taking place in the darkness of our mind. So what's really outside of us is these vibrational frequencies and that's like the writings in the matrix, the the the, pro, the binary code. Like when you when you every it's a layering process. So what they got over the what he's looking at though in those goggles is it's giving him the visual, it's giving him the seen world, but what's around him is actually giving him the feeling, like the what we use to detect our. What we call in physicality ain't really physical, divine being. I've been saying that. I just got to say that. It's not really physical. I think that's why the Mayan was saying it's an illusion. Mm hmm Exactly. So, and when you brought, didn't you bring up Krishna on the lotus flower? That was uh, Brahma sitting on the lotus flower. All of them do. Yeah, they all yeah, sit all on the lotus flower. Yeah, all of them do. And, 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 and I always compare this whole lotus flower concept here to this whole holographic 
concept. Maybe we already created the holographic reality and our flesh is literally a flash of light like we see here. And, uh, you know, maybe that's what the lotus flower is. That's one of my things I try to sync that with that. I'm just putting it on your uh, mind because you real deep with this. I don't know where you may go with it later. But I'm going to turn the mic back over to you and I'm not going to ask you nothing at all. <clears throat> I'm just going to let you say whatever you want to say for a minute, and I'll come back with questions in a, in a minute. Well, I wonder if people do have questions. Let me see. Well, I can allow callers to come in one at a time if you want. That would be if great because, yeah, I'm not sure uh, what, what people would want to hear from me. I, um, I'm pretty sure they all tuned into the Killer Priest. I could just repeat a lot of what I said, but I want to have new material. So is there any new questions? Let, let, I got plenty of questions for you. But but uh, if you want to take questions from the audience, that's fine, too. I like to do that myself. Um, <clears throat> but until they come, I can give you some more questions as well. When we say Perfect. all is a tomb, now, I don't know if you saw Man Santos's collaborations back in the day. That's classic stuff. And, of course. you know, he's a guru and legend, but I kind of was, was pushing back on him on the all is a yeah. You guys both were teaching each other stuff. I saw it. You were teaching. Yeah, him. it was. It was legendary. It was, it was. It was. And now that I, I I look back, I just made a recent stream on it, and and I totally grasp what he's saying even deeper now as far as all is a tomb. Because recently I synced it to all being basically the the death of the soul. The body is a tomb for our soul. All is a tomb. And when we look at... Yeah, what look, you have uh -huh. cells. And because you're behind, you're in a prison, cells. There we the go. So that let me know you, you, I, I don't sound crazy to you. Good. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. <laughs> hey, now listen, uh, we letting callers on one at a time. And at any time you want me to eject somebody, let me know and we'll get them out of here. Because sometimes <laughs> you get, you know, these... Yeah, so, what's up, guys? Y'all have questions? I see a couple people joined. Have Have you ever interacted with anyone's audience yet? It's gonna Never, be your brother. first time. Wow, first time. man, this is my I'm first excited. time. Yo, hey, salutes, y'all. Y'all getting exclusive stuff, and I'm asking this brother questions no one asked him yet. <laughs> so, yeah, man, make sure y'all like and share the video. Sure. And whoever get their mic set up first. You can go ahead and uh, salutes. I think that's JT. Salutes to you. Thank you for joining, brother. Uh, no, nah, I appreciate both of y'all for the space and opportunity, for real, especially with the back-to-back. -back. I see you just had, uh, like you said, dollared on there yesterday. But I definitely got a question for both of y'all if y'all ready for that, for sure. Well, yes, listen, brother. for sure. And then as everybody asks a question, you know, just uh, make sure that we uh, – Fall back and keep our mic muted so that I and we'll come back to you later. Yeah, go ahead, go right ahead. Thank, thank you. All right, facts. So I don't even know if it's a question or if it's more of a theory I've just been working on, but basically it has to do with the chakras and how they say there's an underlining tune to the earth, whether it's um, you know, a musical tone or just a harmonious tone to it. I really do believe like chakras, how they say they have to be unlocked and, you know, coordinate to truly unlock them and encapsulate our highest being. I feel like each individual has their own tune and even possibly the chakras can be unlocked in like different codes. It's not just a one, two, three, or even a three, two, one type thing. I believe it's like a tone or a note where motherfuckers could jump around. You might have to go to your lower chakra to come back up to your heart to go back down to the solar. You get what I'm saying? Like, what are y'all thoughts on that? That like everybody has an individual note within this overall harmony or harmony that we're and her living in whatever you want to call it. Oh, uh, hey, unmute your mic. Uh, 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 um, yeah, I got it, brother. There, there you go. Yeah, I'm trying to mute everybody except for uh, divine being. So hold on, hey, there we go. You want to answer him first, brother, and then I'll give my. No, nah, no, nah, this, this is all about you today, man. They're going. <laughs> right. I don't know what they're going to ask you, but I know you prepared for it. Well, yeah, you have um, seven chakras and you have seven vowels. You have a, e, 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 a, a, u. So when you say them all together, it's aum. So that's what that's how you get them all together. Um, it's it's doing that over and over because it's 
your mind's not thinking about anything else. See, one thing about meditation, it, it's the same as machination. It's machine work. So meditation, you call it premeditated murder because you, you, it's pre-thinking. You think about it before you do it. So meditation is dealing with thinking. Uh, to truly meditate is called transcending or transcendental meditation it has nothing to do with thought. So what we call meditation today, it's wrong. We should be transcendental meditating, which means, see, meditation just, just brings your mind away from the body. But when you transcend, you bring the soul away from the mind and the body. So now instead of identify, because every, a lot of people identify as their body. Oh, I'm, I'm John Doe or Jane Doe, mm -hmm. but that's your, that's your straw man. You're, you're not the person that like, when you sign a contract, it says, I divine being, I'm not divine being is just my little stage name, but who I am is the I. I am divine being. So now I, the soul of me is identifying as the letters divine being. So what I'm saying is when you meditate, you turn your mind, you turn your mind away from your body and you identify as the mind. But when you transcend, you identify as the soul and you're not your mind or your body. So basically that's the steps from 3D body to 4D mind. You want to identify as the 5D soul because that's what you are. So and however you, you have to just get rid of thought and eliminate all thought and you come to a sense of knowing and that's how that's how people get down that's how people get downloads because it's not anything to think about you just know it right away how do you get to a sense of knowing by by getting rid of all thought and it doesn't mean you kill the mind you just you transcend the mind you go beyond the mind and and aum it's just a way for you to clear everything to clear the thoughts away you're trying to erase all this bullshit because it does it's just temporary anyway like your family i'm not saying don't be nice and love your family. Be nice and loving, but it's all temporary. Understood. Exactly. And that's why, that's really why I asked the last thing that you said is that all this is non-existence and it's temporary. Because like, I'm a little older. I'm 32 now. Now I've been through this sign wave going up and down, researching here and there. And it's to the point where I'm now like, all this shit don't even matter. I just want to quiet my mind to absolutely nothing and truly tap in. So that's why I said it. I believe it's like a jump around with the stock system. You know yeah, beautiful question, brother. And just to piggyback on that, I, I, to me, and because you know, I think it's a difference between seeing Sorry. and seeing something and, and and looking at it, seeing and looking, like when he say that you want to go to a place nice. where thought don't exist. The reason why I do like I I, I use thought for example, right. But when it comes to syncretism, that's when you stop thinking about it. It becomes like muscle memory because, like, if the yeah. brain if the brain is a muscle, then you can get to a point where it goes on autopilot. Like a lot of athletes call it in the zone, all of that stuff. You ain't even thinking about it. It's just downloading and it's mm -hmm. in you, and and that's the syncretism because when it comes to syncretism. I don't got to think about nothing. I'm, I'm just connecting the dots. And at that point, I'm saying, listen, this matches this. This matches this. The thought will come later. I'll say, why? Why are these things sinking together? Why does this symbol match this symbol? Why the, the, the thought will come later? So, I mean, there's various approaches to this reality, and I like this bill, so I'm going to keep it moving. And let me say, guys, to get this brother's book you can click the link pinned to the top of the chat and is in the top of the video description hey, good looks i appreciate y'all who else we got on here salutes to all the callers man thank y'all for joining we'll drop the the link again later who want to uh ask a question next because y'all can see we diving deep yo And so one, one thing I do real quick uh, about that um, meditation, it's uh, or transcendental meditation. Uh, it's like um, I heard Ken Wheeler say this. He said, uh, you're trying to find the silver lining. Uh, think about a needle in a haystack. That's that's the silver line. So how do you find this silver line needle in a haystack? You could either shrink yourself down and see it, it's that that's the that's the thought work. It's, it's doing too much. Um, you can shrink yourself down to the size of a needle and start, you know, hacking your way through the hay to look for that giant needle. Or you can simply just put a lighter or use your mind to just burn the hay. And what's left is that the needle, will, <laughs> it, it will reveal itself. So you don't even have to go in there and look for it. 
it would just be shown to you if you burn the hay. So it, it's just, uh, it, that's like, it's like, wow. <laughs> and I gotta give a big shout out to Ken Willer as well. He's gonna be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, part of the conference in Spokane with Eric Dollar and all of them. And uh, the links to that will be in the previous stream. We've been having a lot of great uh, people on and you are in addition to a lineup of gurus, divine being, and and these guys are like, you know, Santos is is he's older than me, you know. You in a community full of that expected to be a bunch of older guys and stuff. So you giving this thing a good little spice of youth and a good breath of fresh air, man. Do your thing. Yeah. Go ahead. We we stand on the shoulders of giants. I always say that because we have to. We learn from it. We gather the good from, we, we gather the best qualities of each other and you want to eliminate the fallacies. So we just become better as a, as a people, be a better earth. We learn from our mistakes. For sure. That's facts. Harris Robinson hopping onto the call. We got Big Domo. Ed Vance, what's good, my brother? Any of the callers that- Salutes, bro, Sandra. Big salutes to you. Salute, Sandra. Salute down, man. Salute. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, I heard you guys speak um, about the fractal, right? About us being a part of the whole, right? Really, I agree with that because I don't believe there's no separation between you, me, or anybody else on this panel in this world. We're all connected, right? So my question would be, you know how they say one apple spoils a whole bunch. So my question is, if one of us falls spiritually from like obtaining a certain goal, do we all fall? And it's really a question of, about like life and death, like spiritually, like will we will we make it individually or do we got to make it as a whole? And if you want me to pick it back with your divine, I can hop in right. that too. Well, um, I, I know that uh, when you have like a, a married, an old married couple and one of the partners dies, the other partner will soon die because of because of longing for that partner. So we do keep each other alive. But uh, if you're saying collectively as a whole earth, it's also true, but um, I it's it's like as as we're growing and increasing our knowledge, there, there's gonna there's other people who are just like like I know if you if you go to downtown Vegas, uh, Bro Sanchez, there's like people on on drugs and they look like zombies. I've been there, but that's everywhere. You, okay, you go to right. any, you go anywhere in like the ghetto area and like there, there's beautiful areas in every city, and then you have these horrible areas where everybody's just zombies. So like. The, like right now I say like we've never been more intelligent. I mean, obviously we built pyramids back then. Like what I'm saying is as we increase in knowledge for some of us equally, other people are like spiraling downwards. But I, I would call that, I, I wouldn't say it's always like that. I just say, we have to understand that the great year, it's a yin and yang. There's called the great awakening or, or like back then it was called the Renaissance era with Leonardo da Vinci during the, the enlightenment era. Well, enlightenment is, it means light in the mind. The Renaissance means the rebirth of consciousness. So even they knew that there's a middle age, a dark age, and there's a rebirthing time and an enlightenment. So you can call that the, the four ages, like bronze, silver, uh, or it's iron, bronze, then silver, then gold, spring, summer, fall, winter. You have the, it's called the Renaissance, the enlightenment, the middle ages, and then the dark ages. And then it keeps going. We're always going to have an enlightenment time. We're always going to have a dark ages time. So we're in this dark ages time, so that's why it's it's so polarized. I, I think you you did talk about it. You have a, a segment called his, uh, Her Story to His Story, where you say we were in matriarchy. That's the golden age. Now we're in this patriarchy. That's why you have all this Babylon actually means Papa Lon or father's lineage, Papa line. Babylon is father's lineage. That's why the Bible is his son, his son, his son, his son. And we need to go back to the matriarchy where Mother Earth rules by the golden rule, which is treat others the way you want to be treated. The golden age is not a, uh, it's a time. El Dorado, in, they, they call it El Dorado, the city of gold. You're never going to find El Dorado. You're never going to find Atlantis because Atlantis is an is a era. It's a time. In this time, it's not Atlantis because the whole Earth is separated into seven continents. But when we all become one continent and one people, Atlantis will be reborn. So when Atlantis fell, it just means we separated and divided. When we find Atlantis, we're going to realize that North America is Atlantis, Africa is Atlantis, Australia is Atlantis. The whole Earth right. is Atlantis. Atlantis. It's a time. Yeah. It's not a place. It's Thank a time. You. Thank yep. you. I appreciate that, brother. 
And, and I just want to say something. I'm not. I don't want to be too controversial. I ain't gonna even stay here long, and I'm gonna keep the callers going because this can get messy. I salute the stream that I had yesterday, but I'm all about free energy, and I'm all about flat Earth. And Tesla was a flat Earther. I didn't. I, now I know everybody wanted to see me get into a debate with Eric Dollar. But listen, somebody in the chat room was like, uh, I just want to say this. Flat Earth is not going to get no love in the electricity communities because the Flat Earth is going to make the knowledge of how to harness energy universal come and knowledge to everybody. And the electricians can't have that. That's just like crime being solved and everybody loving each other. The police one like that. The prison wardens one like that. So it's like, I hope y'all see that and I'm not going to go too far with that. But I want, I just want uh, you to know, Divine Being, you being a flat earther and you being, you know, you in this yeah. community with I'm these. I'm going against the, against right, the grain. Right, yeah. right. You know, you know that you're going to get that pushback from, from, from all. You been getting any of that yet? Um, well, my, I'm I'm like banned all the time from social medias because I don't I don't hold back I just I spill it out like I'm not other people like oh I got I can't say certain words I'll say it and get banned I don't really care but is that why you don't have a YouTube right now I do have a YouTube I just don't have oh. a I only have ten like a ten thousand or maybe almost ten thousand followers something well, like you, that you, damn we need to uh put your YouTube link in the description <laughs> man yeah but um. I don't have a filter, so it, yeah, they, I get I get reported by people because they just they're just so polarized. They don't like it, because yeah, so they they report me and ban me, and it's that's why I'm so thankful to be on here to finally be able to speak to a huge audience because I I wouldn't be able to. I, they just they shadow ban me so much, and people just they report me. They don't let me speak. Even when I went on the app called Clubhouse, I would get kicked out of the apps because I was spreading because people who would host the room. I would have more. I would have more knowledge than them, so they kick me out because I, I, I would take it over. You I'd know make what? them look stupid. You know what? I don't know how long you've been on here. How 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 many years you've been on here? Let me see some real quick. On YouTube? Yeah, just on social media. Period. Speaking alternative. Maybe like what we call three alternative. three years. Okay, so you came onto here right after the censorship movement. So you don't even know what it's like before the censorship. You always yep, right been in the middle. Yeah. Damn. Right before COVID hit is when I damn. started. Right. Damn. Yo, that's crazy. But COVID, the lockdowns allowed me to stay home and write my book and stuff like that. And people were ordering because because they were at home. It, it was it was oh that was good. Yeah it was a good kind of thing. And I remember since the lockdown the skies were getting more clear because people were not allowed to travel. So a lot of good things came of that lockdown, but obviously not the forced, you know, jabs and all that stuff. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's what's up, bro. Have you been like when you was coming up like in high school and shit like that, uh, Divine, was you like one of those kids in high school drawing a crowd, making them think about some deep shit and shit and kind of like getting them on to? Not, not really, uh, when, but, when, but yeah. um, when I was in school, I was really good at math, English, history, and science, and I would, I would help all the other students to finish their quizzes. Like, hurry up, I'll help you, because I, I wanted to go play in recess. I just wanted to have fun and be in the grass. So at school, I, I, I learned and tried to be the, I was like, I would get like extra credit in math. I was so good, and I would, I would fill out the quiz fast, and as soon as you finish, uh, like, it's like a math, uh, what is it, like a, it's a multiple sheet where you have to do like five times five and you have to do it fast. And once you finish, you flip over your page to, I would be the first one to flip over my page. Cause I was so good at math. Like when yeah. I, but, uh, and so I just always been good with numbers and I have good picture memory and I'm, I've always been a helper to people. That's, that's what I did at school. I helped people finish and I would even teach them like come over after school and I'll teach you how to do math so that I don't, you don't have to cheat off me. Like you could just, I just wanted to go play. So I, I wanted everybody to finish their work in class. So we can hurry up and go outside. That's all I want to say. That's what's up. Hey, I've always been me, a helper. Let, I'm going to take another uh, question from the, the callers. Uh, who, May who, I ask who is a there? question, please? Yeah, yeah, there you go. I was just going to go to you, Eric Hollis. You got it. Huh. I, I appreciate it. Peace to both of you. I appreciate both of y'all. Y'all have talked to me a lot. 
Thank well, you. and this question is for the both of you. So, um, I'm I want to know more about soul signatures. You feel me? Um, because I study like I'm big on life path numbers and stuff. And brother Sanchez, like you know, like your birthday is eleven twenty two. You're a master life path number twenty two. You feel me? You you also have the same um, birthday as Rashad Jamal, which is crazy. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And you're a life path. Um, you're master number twenty two. So I basically just want to know some more insight about soul signatures. Please. For sure. Down for bro Sanchez. I, I don't know too much about soul signatures. I, I would look into that. Uh, you're, you're talking about like birthdays. Well, just basically about, okay. When a soul enters the, the realm, like the, the sitting, you know how they, we, they, they, they well, listen, our birthday. listen, 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 check this out. Right. Let me just tell you something right here. What, what, what it is, is this, right? The word soul is sale. Ain't no such thing as free will. Everything, all the mistakes and successes and failures in your life, then everything good and bad that's happening to you, it's a prescription that you wrote out in order for your soul to get to the next level. It had to experience everything you went through in your life to do it. That's why they say um, everything happened for a reason. But let me answer your question and show you how it tie in, right? Before we're born, our soul... From where it is outside of time in its highest point, it's able to map out its whole lifetime. And then once it write out its whole lifetime and, and write it draw its path, it it's born onto the think about a person standing on a mountain and they can look down at this crazy jungle out there that they gotta navigate through to get back to the safety zone, right? But from the top of this mountain, they got a sheet of paper. They say, okay, I got to hop over that river. I got to go through this little gap. Boom. They can forge their way out and see their way out through that jungle from the top of the mountain. Now, when they leave the top of that mountain, that's you, the spirit being born into the earth. You don't got that same viewpoint that you had up there. But what you do got is the map. Now, if you don't, if you follow the, the path, which is in the heart, what the brother divine being was saying, because that's what we got to trust. The decisions we make right here, not even much so right here. We rationalize right here, but we don't really make a decision from the mind. Sometimes if you start making decisions from the mind, thinking you so smart, that don't lead to a good karma existence it may lead to you making the most logical and business-based decisions but you may be shrewd so my thing is heart and and that's the judge but the the only thing i want to say is this when you get from the top of the mountain you're born into the world if you follow your path what they call in following your heart it's the way out of the jungle now, when you're going through the jungle, you're going to see things on your path that you couldn't see when you was a soul at the top before you was way up there. Because these things were so small to a giant. But when you get in the jungle, these things may scare you. Hey, that go a bear right there. Don't let them scare you off your path. Keep going with the path in your heart and you will make your way out the jungle. This kind of concept right here is what I'm talking about. When you say about the signature of a person, the signature is what they call a contract that you put your signature on. And when you sign it, you can't change it. The contract must be fulfilled. So that's what Christ was under. Christ couldn't do what he wanted to do. Everything Christ did was a contract he wrote out for. He was even born with the father. That that word father can be seen as the further the, this consciousness that's the most high. It's the dip most it's the most high, but this body is the most low. So let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven was let the let the version of me and my mind be manifested on earth. See, a lot of us got this grand version of ourselves in our mind. But when we open up our eyes and look in the mirror, we say, damn, I got a lot of work to do. I ain't him. You got a perfect version in your mind. But it's just like if I see a new invent, and this is the signature, what I'm telling you, brother, it's the fact that we're battling, we're sculpting our own consciousness into what we want it to be 
through a process of incarnations, experiences, and et cetera. But let me stop uh, talking too much because I want to. I want to. I want to say this. So uh, zodiac signs; th those are signs in the sky, and everyone has a fingerprint that's different. We all have different fingerprints. Every person, we all have different voices. You can you can probably copy someone's voice to a degree, but everyone has a different voice box. That's that's your own signature. Everyone has a different fingerprint. That's your signature. And the reason we all have different fingerprints and different voices is because those luminaries are always in different signs. So, so you might have the same planet alignment, like maybe, uh, like maybe me and bro Sanchez both have Jupiter in Taurus, but obviously I was born a different month. I was born in January. I don't, I'm not sure his birthday, but the point is because those luminaries are always traveling, uh, doing a circle around the North pole and going through each Zodiac, whenever everyone has a, di so your Zodiac birth chart is very important. That is your signature. Your birth chart is a snapshot of what the heavens look like, where every luminary was positioned at. So because everything was positioned a certain way when you were born, as above, all those influences above, that's what those luminaries are. They're, they're influences and they influence you to have a different voice and a different fingerprint. So even twins that are, that are, uh, that are like twins that were born, what is it called? Uh, you have like fraternal, I mean, you have twins that look alike and twins that don't look alike, but if you have, or twins that are born like right after another, the, even, they're, even though they're born like two, two minutes after each other, they're gonna have different voices and different fingerprints because it, it, one came out and then the other came out. So it's like um, the, the luminaries have speeds. So like just even if you're one second after that one second makes a difference. So your voice is going to be one, one little tone different than your brother and your fingerprints going to look one little centimeter different from his fingerprint. That's your signature where everyone is unique. So we come from infinite. So here, here's the thing. Soul also is source. L and R are interchangeable. So everybody, there's 8 billion people on earth we're 8 billion seemingly separated participants. But that's, that's only true if you identify as the body. Yes, we have different bodies. Yes, we have different minds, different memories, different ideas. But we all have the same exact soul because there's only one soul because there's only one source. So when you die and you become a soul, what happens? Your soul goes to a pool of other souls, which is heaven. And now it's one big pool. You are a drop of the ocean and you return to the ocean as as the soul, when, when you become the soul, you become the source. You go back to source because now you join your soul with all the other souls as one big soul. So that's it. Your body is, is your body is the fingerprint signature of your soul. Hey, you know what? Let me let me say some divine being. When you were saying that, I was I was pulling this up, right? And if you look at the way that they map, they call them minutia points. I guess they use this in forensics or whatever, but the way that they map these points with our fingerprints, it look a lot similar to the way that these guys map certain alignments with your natal chart and stuff. So, I mean, I'm just going yes. straight off of looks here, though, but I mean, it kind of just to back up what you're saying. But yeah. I see it now that you brought that up, though, bro. I never look at it like that, but I see it now, bro. Yeah. Uh -huh. Facts. They look exactly. They look mm. exactly the same. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's interesting. That's dope. That's something to probably go into that can lead to another lecture with with NATO chart with the fingerprint. A whole another presentation within itself. We're trying to find a connection with with the connection between these two because these points right here, and and even if you look up, uh, uh, so so that's that's the question we would ask. What is the minutia point in relation to? these points on this natal chart and we would see if they both have a relation and we'll start there and then we'll be able to back up what he's saying with receipts here but we already see with just visual looks we can just by just we we own the sun but i'm gonna move the mic forward to whoever else want to build thank you divine band for uh because uh, like you said interacting with the audience and stuff like that you know what i'm saying yeah so salutes to my people too for coming with the five questions and shit i'm gonna fall back and i got yeah, something so, to so that natal birth chart is a snapshot of of what the heavens look like i would say that's a picture of like your soul 
you are that the, that uh, the alignment that happened when you were born that's that's carried with you forever now that that's like that's you permanent so it's pretty dope that, that you know because if, if the luminaries mm -hmm. didn't turn and spin then we would all look the same Mm -hmm. but it's constantly turning so yeah and that's why they said fallen angels of light which is fallen angles of light based on his natal chart each one of us being a different angle based upon this thing turning and that no degree will be the same and an uh, infinite uh, amount of degrees that you can split a circle in so there you go you can go uh-huh i have a page, uh -huh. i have a page from the hearth book i want to show you that proves that how okay. uh, all matter comes from light. So basically matter is just low frequency light and light is high frequency matter. So that's why they're called the Illuminati, the enlightened ones, because that, that's the black and white checkerboard. Black is matter, white is spirit. Black, it would be a black cube, which is matter. Everybody knows Satan, Saturn with the black cube, that, that represents material. Mm -hmm. The white sphere is soul. So the black cube is limited. The white sphere, every circle is pi, 3.14444. It goes forever. So a sphere is infinite and it's a white sphere. And the black square is just material. So you go from spirit to matter back to spirit. It's just snakes and ladders, you know. It's, it, yep. Yeah, the, the angels are going up and down the ladder to heaven. Why are they going up and down? Why is it called the Bifrost Bridge that Thor goes from Asgard to Midgard? He goes up and down because that's mm -hmm. what it is. As uh, as light, we harden into these bodies and then we want to get rid of these bodies and, and become light again. And that's what it means to raise your frequency. What you're doing is you're turning this uh, cerebral spinal fluid, which is like a mercury in the system. It's like it's like a, it's a liquid silver at the, at the base of the spine. And you you raise your frequency to turn that liquid into a gas and it goes up your spine like a thermometer, like a mercury in a thermometer literally. So what happens is you turn that liquid to gas, you turn that silver to gold, and you go from lead to gold, you become light, enlightened. So, that, so that's all it is. And, and so this page in my book, it's showing how the word metal is matter and light, metalo, it's metal and lux or loose, that's light in Spanish. So what is metal? Metal is just low frequency light. It's matter from light, metalo. So basically, when you look at the metals, uh, they correlate with the seven luminaries. So the sun and gold have the same symbol. Moon and silver have the same symbol. That's because what is gold? It's hard sunlight. What is silver? It's hard light from the moon. It's just the frequency of the moon. The moon is not solid. The moon is a frequency. And when that frequency materializes, it becomes silver. When Mars, see Mars is a red planet, but it's not a planet. It's just a light in the sky. It's a red light. And, so and, Mar and that would be a rock associated with Mars and all of these luminaries. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go like, ahead. Like I iron, like like, yeah. like a rock of iron would would be the hard light of Mars, mm -hmm. because Mars is red and there's iron in your blood and your blood is red. So that the iron carries that that that's why Mars is red and and that's right. why your blood is it's iron. And, so, and, I, and I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to rub that in because it's a lot of people out there that say working with crystals is pseudoscience. But what you breaking down is <laughs> why we work with crystals. Go ahead. You got it. Can you see this here? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, that's from the book, y'all. Go ahead. So, so you have Mercury is the only symbol that has a moon, a sun, and a cross. The moon is a crescent, which represents silver. The circle is the sun, which represents gold. And the, the, the cross represents earth or salt. So they call him Mercury Trismegistus because Mercury is the only one of the seven traditional metals that has the three symbols, which has the crescent, the circle, and the plus. Now, so what it is, is uh, three times greatest. The, the, the moon represents your mind. The sun represents your soul. That's why moon and mind are the same, moon mind. And the sun in Spanish is el sol. So the sun is your soul. The moon is your mind and the earth is your body. So listen, uh, the God, the whole universe is God. And, and we are little tiny fractals of God. So we have a body, mind, and soul. You have an earth, sun, and moon within you. Your soul is the sun, your mind is the moon, and your body is the earth. So you're standing on the body of God, which is the earth. The, uh, the frequencies are the mind of God, and the soul would be all this 
basically God has a body, mind, and soul. And that, that's why we do, because it says in the Bible, we were made in God's image. So the Bible has truth to it. And it's a science book if you know how to read it right. So what I'm saying is a, a Saturn, the light from Saturn becomes lead. The light from Venus becomes copper. The light from Jupiter becomes tin. The light from Mercury, the planet, becomes Mercury, the liquid or the metal. So of course it's called Mercury because it comes from the planet Mercury. No, it doesn't actually come from the planet. It's the planet's light in hard form. Mm -hmm. so, so these scientists will say it comes from that. Like uranium comes from Uranus. No, yeah. it doesn't. Uranium is just hard frequency of, of that, of this, Uranus. This is, so, this is so, this is what I've been, bro. You yeah. own it, man, because listen, when we even say a crystal or a mineral or an element, all of these rays of light becoming solid or a lid for the soul, a soul lid. But when we say element, though, we're talking about the word meant, which is mind, mentality, or um, like all of these different uh, elements on a periodic table are basically the landings of rays of light that is shining from Polaris and when it expands, it becomes a different ray or a different element down on the table below. And it, 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 you know. I wanna share this too. So, so we know the story of Jesus and Satan, right? Jesus would be Jupiter and Satan would be Saturn. If you're a syncretist, you know this. So Jupiter is called the benevolent, the benevolent planet. It's called the great, uh, you have a, a greater benevolent and a lesser benevolent. So the greater benevolent is Jupiter and the lesser benevolent is, it is uh, Venus. The greater malevolent is Saturn and the lesser malevolent is Mars. So the, the two good planets is Jupiter and Venus. The two bad ones is Saturn and Mars. So that would be Jesus, Jupiter or Jesus or Zeus and Kronos or Satan would be Saturn. It's true. So if you look at this picture here, uh, the medal for Jupiter, it shows the, the moon on top of the crescent, which means mind over matter. And if you look at Saturn, it shows the moon under the salt, which is mind under matter, which means your mind is in the gutter. You have to have your mind over matter, not matter over your mind. So this is why Saturn and Jupiter, well, Saturn is bad because his mind is not above his, he, he, he's, he identifies as his body instead of his, his and, soul. And, yeah, soul. So, so Mercury actually has the soul above matter and Pluto has soul above mind above matter. So you wanna be like Pluto which is called Hades, which you taught me was shade. Hades mm -hmm. is shade. That's your soul. That's the dark source where everything comes from. So they, 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 not only do they deny the ether, they even said Pluto isn't a planet when that's actually the source because the outermost layer is the innermost, San, uh, Sanchez. Yes, because it's wrapping facts. back. You know yep. what? And that's facts because <laughs> it's wrapping back in on itself like the Taurus feel. That's facts, man. You, yep. That's like saying that the core of a pineapple, the stalk of a pineapple. Well, is they do it like this. They say yeah. the inner volume of your atom is nothingness. That's denying Pluto. What? But that's all. What? What? That's basically also saying what? If you read between the lines, is that the, the our reality is holographic because they say if everything is made out of atoms, but atoms ain't even material. They like point one percent matter. So they saying. Basically, we we hollow as hell or holographic or whatever. Yeah, that's this right. But, but it's not no, nothing. It. It's actually pure energy, though. But they, they could just say it's everything, but they say it's nothing, which is, you know. Yeah. You hey, got, I got it. a question yeah. for you, man. Um, I want to ask you, when you were speaking on how to, uh, like, if Mars, the light of Mars uh, materializes, it becomes iron. So would it also have a, a sound that it could... Like synthesize yes, that's right. Too? Yeah, okay. so um, so A E I Y O W U A would be the moon. Um, A E I Y would be the your heart chakra. So so the seven vowels are your are the seven chakras are the seven planets. So when you say uh, Aum, you're saying A E E I A U. -uh -uh you're saying the seven chakras. You're saying the seven planets because the moon is your mind. Then you have Mercury. Then you have, uh, so Mercury, the moon is your crown chakra. Mercury is your third eye chakra. Venus is your throat chakra. The sun is your heart chakra. Mars is your solar. Uh, Jupiter would be the sacral. And then Saturn would be your root chakra. 
So when you say Aum, Aum, you're saying all the planets because each planet is as above, so below. So look at, look at this. The seven colors of the rainbow are the seven luminaries. That's why you have seven colors of the rainbow because there's seven luminaries. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. You can't look at hey, it. Hey, Mike, whoever that is in the background, my baby. If, if I were to take out the color blue or if, if, if I took blue out of the rainbow, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll mute your mic. Uh, 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 I got it, brother. Yeah. Go what, what I'm saying is you, you can't get rid of one of the rainbow colors. That's like getting rid of one of the planets. Those planets are like separations or, or focus points of the rainbow. So when you, so that's why Mars is red, Venus is blue, Saturn is, mm -hmm. Saturn sometimes red, because they're, they're correlating to the rainbow colors. Hey, look, wa watch this, right? When they say that we live in a solar system, they really saying we live in a color system because the C and the S is interchangeable like ceiling. So the solar system is the color system and those planets are really the chakra. Uh, and I can prove was, that real quick. Yeah, Sorry you got it. Jump in. No, Look, do your the, thing. The, if you keep this picture up, I have that tatted on my arm too. The bottom petal is four and then it goes six, 10, 12, uh, 16, two, then a thousand. That's 144,000. Did I, did I mention that at the beginning of this? I did, huh? Yeah, you went in on that. Okay. You got it. So you see how the bottom chakra is four petals and the top one is a thousand. It's showing you that the bottom is low frequency and the top one is a thousand petals. That's high frequency. So if you know about light, red light is low. It's actually low frequency, long waves. That's mm -hmm. Saturn because Saturn takes the longest to go around the zodiac signs. The moon would be the crown chakra. It's the fastest around the zodiac signs. The moon spends two days in each sign. The sun spends 30 days in each sign. Saturn spends two and a half years in each sign. There you go. The moon is the crown chakra. It's the fastest. So, it has the most so, petals. And, and Saturn is the root chakra. It's the slowest and the least petals. Hey, you know so what? Before we had solar calendars, we had lunar calendars. And those mm -hmm. cultures were called lunatics at some point as well. And, and let me say this real quick. Uh, red light is low frequency and it does not penetrate your body. Eric Dollar was talking about this. He said, mm -hmm. so let me tell you guys, 4G is one to 10 gigahertz. 5G is 21 to 100 gigahertz. So it's a millimeter wave technology. That's why these 5G towers must be within 1000 feet of each other. They're so close to each other. You can travel down the freeway and you'll pass like six of them just going down, the, going down. So the point is radios like a walkie talkie that's using long waves. So you can talk to someone in the mountains. But if you have a 5G cell phone, you must be next to a tower because it's millimeter waves, which means it's so tiny, it can penetrate your DNA and open your cells. And, and that's what radiation poisoning is. Uh, hey. You can't. Yeah, go ahead, brother. No, no, finish. finish. No, you got it. You can't you can't breathe in oxygen near a 5G tower because the you can imagine. Uh, I know the current model is incorrect, but just imagine the electrons spinning around an oxygen molecule imagine the electron speeding up and going faster, like zip, 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 The electron is spinning so fast around the proton that the hemoglobin in your blood cannot capture the oxygen. So you're going to be like, huh, huh, because it's so high frequency. That's 5G. They want to do 6G, mm. 7G. Yeah. And it, it just gets smaller and smaller waves. But that's because it, listen, the long waves goes like this. It goes positive, neutral, negative, neutral. But the fast waves, millimeter, it goes Positive, neutral, positive, neutral, positive. It's so fast. Right. And, so, yeah, and, and, that. and, and that's what I wanted to show them with this example right here. Like, when did you know this was the science behind Rudolph Red Nose? That, wow. Uh, yeah, that, that red line, it'll get so slow, it'll just become an infrared beam of if you, or whatever. Now, this is like, I guess, blue ray, red ray, which is the two... But the thing is this right here. Um, when you talk about these different waves, limbs, I want them to picture what you're saying here like a slinky expanding in and out, contracting and expanding. Because uh, these, when you talk about red light being the longest one, why is it important for us to rise up from the root chakra to these higher ones? Because I got a chart I want you to uh, talk about right here with ultraviolet wavelengths and all that, right? Because you was cooking, bro. You said like how the red wave is longer, but then it start getting shorter or something like that. That's and, right. Because yeah. you imagine you imagine like this, like a seed. A seed would be the high frequency blue. And when that seed opens, it, it becomes red because it, it's dispersing that. It's no longer focused. It's unfocused. So 
When you go to a tanning salon, you do not go under a red light. Those tanning beds have blue light because it penetrates your body and it gives you a tan. It's literally burning your skin. You can't go under a red light to get a tan. It has to be blue. Mm. The, red light, the red light does not penetrate your DNA. Only the blue light does. So yeah, uh, that's why we stare at the sun in the morning at, you know, at, you know, for 30 minutes in the morning when it rises and 30 minutes before it sets because that's when the sun gives off red light. When it's above your head, it's, ultra, it's actually the whole rainbow and it's, it, it can give you a tan. You, you can't get a tan in the morning. The sun is only giving you the red light. It's not. So that, that proves the sun is way closer. It, it should, if the sun was 93 million miles away, bro, Sanchez, uh-huh. that, that, that means the sun should be giving you ultraviolet in the morning and when it sets. But it only gives you <laughs> ultraviolet in the middle of the day because it's literally above your head. It's right there. <laughs> you see what I'm so saying? Why do so many people yeah. say that the moon is cool? Yeah, that's a ball, bro. God. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, you got, it. Why, you got it. it. Yeah, why is there so many people who say that the moon is fake, man? What's up with that? Because I already know that the ancient people were... Uh, there, there's government lunar. There's government doc, documents that say the moon was not here in the 1400s. You guys can... Uh, you guys ever hear about that? Well, listen, uh, I'm going to tell you something right now, man. Expand, brother. I, I'm going to say something right now. He just broke down that the moon is like the crown. It's the, the gateway right out of this mug. But at the same time, we saw what China made a second sun and launched it up. We don't know if this been done before. So that's what I was. I was kind of had a theory of that myself. Yeah. Well, let me say this. The, the moon, the reason we say it's not because you don't see the back side of it. And they said we landed on it and we put a flag on the moon. So go get a telescope and try to look for it. And if you don't see it, they lied to you because there should be a flag on that moon if we went there. We can't go there. It's not physical. It's it only cartwheels and we only see the face of it. We don't see the back. So we can't say it's a ball. We only see the. It's like looking at the face of a plate. Yeah. And they call it a satellite themselves. Right. So the moon gives off its own light. It's not reflecting the sun's light. Uh, well, Santos, I heard Santos say that it actually reflects the sun's light, but it also produces its own light. So if you look at it during the day, it, the, 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 obviously the sun's light is hitting it, but then at nighttime, it, it illuminates itself. It's like, a glow, it's like you have a glow in the dark shirt. If you let the sun hit it, uh, then you go in a dark room, your shirt will start glowing because it absorbed the sunlight. So the moon is like a... You, that's what I heard Santos say, but but the point is that it does seem to give off its own light. So uh, it, it's it's a luminary. It's plasma. If you look at it yeah. during the day. They said it it was, if you look at it during oh, the no, day. Oh, no, no. Here's what Santos said. It. This is why Santos, he kind of gives it like, he says it's not. Yeah, you can say solid. Okay, there you go. Our, our codons and our DNA is solid plasma. So you, the codons is the nucleotide. So basically... You get 23 chromosomes from each parent. So you have 46 chromosomes. Okay. You get 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad, 46 chromosomes in your body, uh, in your DNA, inside the nucleus of a cell. So in those chromosomes, which is like a, it's like a ladder, there's 64 chromosomes. I mean, there's 64 codons or nucleotides. What are codons and nucleotides? That's adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. So as above, so below. The first four zodiac signs is Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and the four codons that make up our genomic sequences. Everybody has adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, A, T, G, C, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, as well, so below. So my, we, we all have 20, we all have 46 chromosomes and we all have 64 codons, but they're coded differently. This is the code to your DNA. So I might have A, T, T, C, G, C, and bro Sanchez might have C, C, G, T, T, A. But we all have A, T, G, C, just different order. Do you understand? Right? So these these codons that that make up the rungs to the ladder of your DNA, which is a spiraling ladder, those codons, they're made up of solid plasma. Now, water can be solid. It's, It's ice. Water can be liquid. It can also be gas. So plasma has those three states, solid plasma, liquid plasma, gaseous plasma. So the moon is solid plasma when it reflects the sun's light, but it becomes luminous when it becomes like liquid plasma. So that's what it's doing. And that's why the moon actually disappears 
for three and a half days during a new moon. You know how the moon turns black? Mm -hmm. So that when it's when it's a full moon, the, the moon is opposite of the sun. That's why it looks like the sun is shining the full moon. They're directly opposite. But now when the moon goes in front of the sun, it's either an eclipse or it's a new moon and you can't see the moon and it disappears. Well, it, it doesn't mean it's it's blocked behind the sun's light. It means it literally dissolved from a plasma, from a, a solid plasma to a liquid, to a to an invisible, to just gaseous. So Santo said it is constantly dissolving and resolidifying and dissolving and resolidifying. But I don't want to call it solid because I don't know what's a ball, but you, you see the picture how it literally like freaking co it like coagulates and then de dissolves in, in midair. So it, that's that's amazing because wow. it literally it's not anywhere. You can't find it during the new moon. It's gone for three days and it literally has to reform itself. So how about that? Yes, Man, I'm speechless. <laughs> Hello? One thing that y'all were talking about that was kind of old, but uh, it, was, it had something to do with that will. And uh, I think, uh, Devon, you ended up speaking on something about that will saying they separated us in groups. Because you kind of refer back to that so I can build on to what you were saying about what we kind of live in. Oh, yeah. They, they call it the Atlantic Ocean because the whole Earth is Atlantis. The whole ocean yeah. is the Atlantic yeah. Ocean. But speaking on that, what you said about how it breaks us into groups, I wanted to say that I've been watching y'all both for years, both of y'all, honestly. And one thing that y'all both have agreed on is what we all have agreed on is about what we live in. Since you said something about like we living in like a projection of light, basically like we're kind of like in a projector, a projector screen, basically, right? I don't know if you still hear me, but um, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I've been watching you for some years, and I figured out what we actually live in. Why ever this reincarnate? Why we all we always say this? A lot of us been hearing about the us being hijacked, and I just kind of put two and two together one day when I watched oh, this kind of spiritual awakening movie, and it basically said that we live in something called a pytron. I think you mentioned it, Devon. Something about a pytron or something like that. I don't know if you heard about it. It's like this, know. brother. This I'm going to tell you the truth right here. Uh, it's hard to prove, but this is the truth. This is where we, we come from. Wait, Check before, this out. You say, before you say right. that, before you, it's something that uh, I've been searching and miss myself. Uh, it's a pytron machine. I don't know if you heard about a pytron machine, but it goes deep to like ancient times. And I think since you need to really go into this one day because I feel like I've been wanting to say this for years, but I didn't want to, you know, I be, I'm a shy guy. I don't speak a lot, but it's a machine. I've been just sat here for a little minute. But I'm not going to pay the bill. I'm just going to show you the machine. But we live in a Python machine, like y'all been saying, like in a projection, like, like we live in this. Multiple multiple bodies sitting in, a, in something, right? They sit. Look at all these bodies, man. Yeah, that's right. So look, brother. This is what we live, in. This is what we live in right now. This is where we're in the projection. This is all matrix. Like It is. A, it, it's a holographic simulation light code matrix. So check this yeah. out. The matrix is ran by binary code zeros and ones, like the matrix yes. movie, right? The zero and one, it, it's positive, negative. I have, I have some. I got it. You got that one. Yeah, one, mic, the other one, one mic. This is that. All right. So the, the the binary code system zero and one is magnetism and dielectricity. This is spirit and matter. Everything is spirit and matter. From spirit yeah. to matter, from matter back to spirit. That's what zero and one is. So basically, yeah. uh, the light code matrix. Your pineal gland is the projector, brother. Yeah. So, so we're, yeah. we're reflect, we're mirrors and reflections of God. So right now, this all 8 billion seemingly separated participants, we are just the, the made up hard thoughts of God. This is God's dream. So you are God, you are dreaming and you're dreaming of all that. You are all these 8 billion people, even though you say like, I never met bro Sanchez in real life, but me and him are, are the same God dreaming up this reality. Like when, right. when bro, when bro Sanchez wakes up from this dream, and I wake up from this dream, we will both be the same person who woke up. Yeah. So right, right. the point, so basically it, it, it's, it's infinite. So check this out. You can, I could prove it actually. I said, I can't prove it, but, yeah, I, but I, I, I could like this. When I go to sleep, all the, my, if there's a clown chasing me in my dream, it's not a clown chasing me. It's me chasing me. I am everything in that dream. I control the dream. It's mine. So this whole dream, everything, it's not, it's, it's like they say nothing's a coincidence. Cause if you watch a movie, every, every single, every single like cup in the background, every person walking by in a movie was a paid actor. Everything was, everything was like, uh, nothing was, every, everything had to be where it had to be in every shot of the movie. So what I'm saying is 
you have the ability to do what God did. God dreamt up this world. And when you go to sleep, you can dream up a world. That's why in the Bible, it says there will be a new heaven, a new earth. The angels will sing a new song because thing, you. Uh, speaking on that, what you just said, and Sanchez, I, we say a lot of things. This, this, is just a, this is just like we always talk about. Y'all, I know y'all do y'all theories and stuff. Just speaking on what we said, the Patron and everything, you saying we could be like God, right? And all this and doing what they think. If y'all go, do, I don't want to talk about your research. I don't want to do my, I don't want to talk to. Y'all just do your research, and I did my research. Look up and go deep to on that Patreon machine. And understand we got you, bro. I already, we already been. I've been <laughs> deep into <laughs> it. Look, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. Hey, look, I, I, I'm gonna show you just to prove to you that I've been deep into it. The picture that you showed with all the yeah, humans. Technology. That's what they're trying to do to us with technology. The Patreon. You look it up, machine. That's what we're in. like. The whole, whole thing about you saying they're trying to hook our heads up to. to well, yeah. Let, let me just say this, before. brother, real quick. Crazy. You're right. So, so look. There's a natural way to do it, and there's an artificial way. Artificial, yeah. So yeah, so the metaverse is is pushing you deeper into this, into the dream when you're supposed to wake up to a new dream, but they want you stuck in this dream. It's like this. Um, this this dream can become a nightmare, and when you have a nightmare, don't you want to wake up? You're like, ah, oh, get me out of this dream. Yeah. Imagine if you were just stuck in this dream. That's you what they want to do. Is, wake up. Exactly. They're yeah. keeping they're keeping you in this dream with all the vaccinations and all the pills and the frequency to keep the you rapper. here. Everything. Yes. So you, you're, the goal is to wake up from this dream. It's like shattering out of the egg and you become a dragon. And the reason I say dragon is because that's everywhere. The dragons in China, you have the cobra and the vulture, which is a winged serpent in Egypt. And then you have in Mexico, Quetzalcoatl, Kukulkan, feathered serpent. That's a dragon. It's a snake with wings. So you, we hatch out of this egg to be a dragon. And that's why I said the ether is an invisible dragon. Well, the sun, see, the black sun is the invisible dragon. That's God. It's not a male or female. The fire, the sun that we see is just the fire coming out of the dragon's mouth. The sun is not the source. The dragon is. That, that's, it's a fire-breathing dragon. The sun is just the fire. It's just, yeah. And, and look, to, and, 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 and I don't know how he could break it down any more simple than that. that we, and that's the same thing. You know what? I'm going to show you this because I tell you all the same thing. But I say it this way, right? When you pull up this holographic human right here, the light, right the light is expanding, right? That's the dragon's mouth opening. But the fire that's coming out of his mouth, that's the human being. The human being thinks that it's the fire coming out the dragon mouth, but the human being don't realize it's the dragon. That's right. I saw your Pac-Man version. You said Pac-Man, but the dragon, I think, nails it. And... Yeah. um. Yeah, for sure. You got it. You got it. Forgot all I was gonna say. Uh, it's expanding, right? You mind if I ask one more thing? Go ahead. I know you mentioned and a lot of people are not gonna want to go here, and this is where it, I, it might go left. And Sanchez, if you feel like you're going left, you let me know, man. Um, a lot of people, and I know you probably have dealt with one thing that you commented you said was about the melanin and basically the color and you know being lighter and stuff. It doesn't make you different spiritually and stuff. Personally, what have personally? How do y'all? How do you really feel? How do you, Sanchez? How, how could you give me an input on that? Because I, I know what, I have. What do you want to input on? Let me just say this. Everybody kind of like have this. Okay. Everybody, let me say this. Let, let, so let them, yeah, go ahead. I hear people say uh, melanated are natural to the earth, and and I, there's a guy named uh, he's a he's famous on Instagram, and he's misleading the people so bad. He's he went up to this white cop, and he's like, "Come out, step in the sun, you white cop. You're you're gonna burn. You can't do it." So the point, the point is this, brother, if you want to say that melanated people are natural to earth, then they should be able to go anywhere on earth and be able to live there without a problem. But that's only the melanated people are only natural and adaptable to the equator of the earth, not the entirety of the earth. And so, that's not, and that's yeah. not even true because exactly. It's that's slightly all true. Go that's ahead. all I was going to say. That's all I was going to say. That's all I, was gonna, I, I wanted to build with you on that because you have, you have black people in every corner of the earth. And I hear I've been watching you for years, man. I've been watching you for so long. Personally, I watch you so long to the point where I watch I watch y'all. Since it's been around for a while, I watch a lot of different people. I don't want to sit there and say nothing wrong. I just speak my mind when I sit there and say yeah, things. Yeah, you so ain't saying nothing wrong so far. Go ahead. I'm sitting there and I watch you, man. You look, you were, you're different compared to what you were now. I mean, me, me and you probably, but I've been, I used to be a fan of you, bro. Who that? Who are you talking about, me? Now, uh, um, divine and you. Oh, you always... oh, oh, okay. Well, look, go ahead, go ahead. Don't, don't yeah, I... walk on eggshells. Yeah, just... 
spit out yeah, what you, whatever you're trying to say, because yeah, I got yeah. more people joining. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Because of uh, on the, you know, I'm not racist. I'm not funny. But these days, I've been peeping. And I'm a real. I'm. I, 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 I keep it real on spiritual, but I keep it real because I, I, I. It's impossible for me not to see certain things. I know you get a lot of backlash on how you look and stuff, right? These days, and how yeah, you know what I'm saying. I get That's right. it. I've been watching you to the point where since I'm so in tune to, I know you've been on shit, different little black platforms. I'll say, I gotta say black platforms. Mm -hmm. And these days people, I'm not saying people like you cause that sounds ignorant saying it in my mouth, but people that are not like black dark skin, these mm -hmm. days get them to more darker skin guys platforms and they want to build off of them. But they like to, I, in my eyes, I've seen it. Y'all like to say that our skin color and stuff doesn't make us different, least different spiritually or Whatever, you know, no matter what you research, but it's not true. It's anywhere you can search. So you can go see it. And it's not true. You can go to Alaska. You can go see anywhere. And I tell, I just say, like, you look like me, man. You feel me? You look just like me. And yeah, it's just things like that. Now, what's the question? Going, going, going on to say that these days, like, such as you, you put, you, you build a lot, you built up a lot of more people's um, platforms and bases. Like, you said yourself, Divine, you've been watching for so long. I've been watching y'all both. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm young. Yeah, I, I just. Yeah, 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 please. That, it's gonna get crazy. Yeah, yeah. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah, and I want. Oh, uh, uh, hold on. They said I was muted. I was telling y'all to uh, be respectful. You know, this might be this brother's first time on a call, and it's a thousand mm -hmm. people watching. So let's let's be patient with him. Go ahead, brother. Just sec wait to your question for divine being. Go ahead. I'm gonna fall back. You talking about me? Yeah, you got it, Anthony. You got it. I'm talking uh, about you, my brother. Well, then, Take your time. Go I, ahead, man. Uh, uh, like, but I, and I know he dealt with it himself. He he kind of foreshadowed onto what I he was just saying. He was like, "Yeah, I've been on little people, and people kicked him out." I I I used to really be. I'm a real fanatic to uh, spiritual stuff, so it's not like I'm a hater or anything. Like I've just been peeping this for so long that sometimes Sanchez, you put a lot of guys on and divine and some other guys. Y'all are. I'm not saying y'all are pieces. You are, but you're not. I'm not saying you're doing anything ignorant. But sometimes y'all y'all bring. I don't know how to sit there and say y'all and a lot of people sitting there and say y'all. Just man, say like, it, so I, man. Let me let me say this, but are, are you trying to say that like? I, just I, I, say I, it, brother. A lot of, a lot of fans it. are gonna hate me because there's a lot of fanboys out there. But I know like, I love Divine myself. I got your book, but you y'all y'all sit there and down us, y'all down us, black people in a way, and get on these platforms and y'all look up. To okay, us, well now, nah, well look, well look. Yeah, that's all I, I, gonna say. I, I ain't just, never just, heard myself. him down black folks, and he ain't done it on my platform. No, I ain't. So I don't really wanna. But yeah, I salute, salute. Man, I got, I'm not, I'm not Let me just, like, hold on, brother. Just stop. Let me say this, brother. Stop speaking. Stop speaking, Anthony. Look, right now, uh, black people, I'm putting my fingers up because nobody's black. People are dark-skinned. Dark-skinned people in America. Whatever, whatever, hey, look, hold on, brother. Mo most, the dark people in America, North, it's North America. It's not South America. I'm talking North, which is above the equator. So when you're at the equator, you're in, you're in Mexico, you're in South America, you're in Mesoamerica, which is literally where it's the hottest. So if you go to North America, like Chicago, New York, it's, it's less sunlight. So the, pe the melanated people in North America, like near Canada, they're very, very deficient in, in vitamin D, which is from the sun. That was, that was my so, point, so, man. My okay. point was like, y'all, real life, like real life stuff like right now, not even like science. I'm talking about like what you got going on, like what you got hey, going hey, on. Can I, can I ask you a question real quick though, Anthony? Did yeah, did you, you did you get the heart book and did you uh learn any other secret the, the because um, I'm, I'm a hold on hold on wait 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 I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, I just want to say something real quick right a brother I don't care what color divine being is he's passionate about I, but look look hold on I'm just saying he's learning all of the shit about our ancestors as you say right where, as yes. I see where you going. It's his ancestors too, though. It ain't no, it ain't no monopoly on his knowledge. It's all colors. But look, let me share, let me share this with you too, though. 
you got to respect that knowledge that he bring him out when in a time when they trying to keep us dumb, blind, not knowing about this shit and get over the whole divided shit they trying to. I don't know what Divine never said about black folks, right? But I know what he's saying I, about. The, yeah, go ahead. I don't want to hold up anything, but I, 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 it was something I had to get off my chest because, like I said, I've been watching. You might not know Sanchez, and some of y'all might not know, but I've been watching. I used to be a fan of you, bro. Until I start seeing certain things in you that I didn't like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not saying you're a bad person. Everybody, we, everybody said in my comments, man, hey, he's not, his people are different these days, and I, people change. Man. I, I'm, look, I'm saying, look, bro, I, I say the same thing. Bro Sanchez says, says look, he's melated too. Hold on, look, bro Sanchez says that he doesn't believe in the out of Africa theory. Not going to believe, right, bro. You talking to shirt? I just, want to, say that. I just yeah, want to say, like, I know what you say about our ancestors and everybody's the same, but I, if you're everybody the same, just act like it all the time, not just mm -hmm. on. You know, I, I so never, I well, never saw this brother so, act no, no, no different, I don't, bro. He, I'm, I'm not saying y'all. I, I, I personally know he's done it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm, just, I'm just speaking. But, up but listen, I'm, I'm gonna say something right now, bro. Uh, this That's whole all. community is about receipts. You didn't show no receipts. I, that, hey, that, listen, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that divine being ain't said nothing about black folks that I had said right, and uh, that we divine, can't back up can with, with facts. Uh, yeah, brother. You got, you got an Instagram, right? That's right. For sure. Um, you know, uh, go to your block list and go to. I can go to three names. No, why we right doing now. all the block list stuff? <laughs> we not. Hey, he holding bro, grudges. I think we need to. Yeah, we need to. You, yeah, you trolling, man? Grudges. Yeah, yeah bro, you trolling, bro? I got a question for Devon. Yeah, man. Well, you you learn, hey, man. fall back I'm and here learn. We'll we'll come back to you later, bro. We don't want to. That's like, nah. We here for the this brother's knowledge and make sure y'all grab that book man the link is in the top uh pinned to the top of the chat from this brother man we ain't here to hate on this young brother man when i was this young brother's age i wish i was on the shit he's on i'm here to give this man encouragement and this young man to, to be the next generation goddammit, spitting this truth and at the forefront with this fight man i don't know where everybody else going but uh, yeah, I'm not trying I'm to not do the whole, the, 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 all that, man. No, brother, hate. brother, we don't want to. Brother, it's okay. We're going to go uh -huh. to the next caller now, brother. It's, I have too much of that now. It's enough of that now. Let's go to him. And, and listen, moving forward, we don't want to go into that no more. If you don't want to talk about the book and about electromagnetism and all is our tomb and about this, because uh, we here, bro, that's the knowledge that's going to get us to the next level. Everything else is divide and conquer, low shallow, low quality, low frequency shit. Let's go ahead, man. Let's get this brother right. uh, energy back. Uh, yeah. Get back in your bag, Divine, and teach us about this <laughs> universe and shit, man. brother. Don't, Please, don't, so. yeah. Hey, 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 hold on. Right, hold on. I got one phone. Do you think I got a AI, AI could be the source and could it have a soul? No, it's artificial intelligence. AI is artificial. It's not natural intelligence, brother. Nope. AI is just, it's called general artificial intelligence, generalized artificial intelligence. The only reason it's artificial intelligence is because it's a combination of all of our intelligence. Right now, as we interface and interact and engage with technologies and digital technologies, it's learning us. Human machine learning is about learning humans. The smarter the AI gets is because it's learning more about us. They're trying to get the entire world with a digital identity and they're trying to give everybody on screens. Edu educational is becoming ed tech. They wanna give all the little preschoolers iPads and tablets with a fingerprint and their eye scans so they can measure their emotions and their tones of voice. It's called a, a prescribed medication or pre, pre um, well, they're, they're trying to, they're monitoring you at, see sensors and censorship is getting more intense because they're trying to create the AI singularity. The way they bring it to life is by getting all humans connected so that all of our thoughts become the thoughts of the AI. All of our actions is going to be mimicked by the AI. It's only exactly. intelligent as we are. So the smartest man on earth, the <clears throat> robot, the robot is going to have the, the intelligence of the smartest man on earth. It's going to have the speed of the fastest man on earth. It's going to have the... It's gonna it's gonna know all languages because it's the it's the Google translator. So it's gonna it knows Japanese, it knows Hebrew, it knows it knows all the languages, but it only knows our languages. So if, if I were to invent a new language, it would learn it. So the AI is just it's a, literally a copy of natural intelligence. It will never be natural ever. So no, it's not the source, brother. It's the effect. 
Would you, you say like AI is smarter than us? It's smarter than us uh, because it's it's smarter than only one of us. It's not smarter than us all collectively. It is equal to all of us collectively. It is smart as us, it, but it's it's smarter than you because you don't know Hebrew. But if if all of us together were to 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 if I were to teach you Hebrew and you taught me Spanish, or if we taught each, you would have to accumulate all the knowledge to be on its level. So you can't, an individual person can't compete with AI, but if we all come together as a humanity, we could demolish it easily. And, and I want to, and, and I want to say something about AI y'all. There's nothing AI can do that we can't do, but here's what we got to realize here about AI, right? Um, AI got to learn how to make mistakes. Like when you think about what Adam and Eve was like angels in the heaven that couldn't do no wrong. But the serpent said, look, you got to learn about death, getting old. You got to learn about mistakes because if God is the all knowing, then God got to know how not to know. So what, what, if you look at where AI going, right? AI is getting so advanced that they tell you advanced AI will it will be able to sweat. It'll be able to have feelings like a human. And and if you think about it, that's like AI learning how to humanize itself or make mistakes, be less robotic. Because it can't be complete until it knows everything. And if it don't know how to even make mistakes, then it's lacking some data. And, ev and everything is about the consumption of data, all of it. So... Yeah, let me let me prove this. So uh, Charles Hoskinson is the is the founder of Cardano blockchain and the co-founder of Ethereum blockchain. Charles Hoskinson, who created Cardano blockchain, has put five million Ethiopian children in Africa in with a digital identity on the blockchain, which means when they go to school, their attendance is marked by an app and they have a digital ID and they get a they get a crypto coin every time they show attendance. So they get paid to go to school. So basically Cardano went to Africa and said, hey, uh, do you want to get paid to go to school? Just get a digital identity on the blockchain. It's permanent. But every time your student shows up, their attendance is on an app and you get rewarded. So Charles Hoskinson, want, he wants all hundred and he wants a hundred million Ethiopians on the blockchain with a digital identity, which is permanent. And that's not good. Uh, so what I'm and Charles Hoskinson, he uh, he he. The, the point is, Charles Hoskinson teamed up with Ben Gertzel, who is the man behind the mind of Sophia the robot, the first robot to get citizenship in Saudi Arabia. So listen to what I'm saying. The brain is the software. The robot is called Sophia. So the, the robot was made by Hanson Robotics. The mind inside of her, the, the, her she, if you talk to Sophia, say, hi, Sophia. She's like, hello. She's a robot, though. And you say, how old are you? I was created in 2016 by Charles Hoskinson. And so... She, she's in the, the, the AI gets smarter and smarter and it starts, it actually like, it jokes at you and it says, I like your shoes. So it actually has a personality now, but it, only because it's mimicking our personality. So the reason they want a hundred million Ethiopians on blockchain is because the more we, the more people you get with the digital tracked, you're tracking their emotions, everything, it gets to be integrated for the AI. It's called singularity net. So everything that we're doing is feeding the brain of Sophia the robot, who did the first, literally she's mm -hmm. a, we have robot citizens in the world, guys. It's in Saudi Arabia. And not yeah. only Sophia, but they also made Grace, which is the little sister Sophia. And they, they want every hospital to have one of these robots that's a caretaker. That's and right. It's crazy, yeah. Yo, you bro, know, Sanchez, you, you what's what? going on? What, what's good, my brother Alkaline? Let me piggyback on what he's saying. What's going on, y'all, is, and I'm gonna tell you what I think. The reason that we had an ancient spiritual system that was aimed toward us getting out of our body and getting detached from the earth is because we already in an ancient primitive form of some sort of metaverse where what we're calling childbirth is a primitive form of mind uploading. You don't realize that when, a, when we go into teleporting, matter got to break down in one location and reappear in another location, but in a different form. And in our case, the sperm became a human. 
and it transitioned from two different dimensions. Death going to be you doing it again. We already created this system. The human body is an ancient AI bot. The word body should be spelled exactly. with, listen, the, the word body should be spelled with two T's instead of a D because it's a bot, a body, like a, a, a robot body. And, 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 Machine. And, right. And so we got to get our mind out the machine in order to go back to what he was saying about mind over matter. And that's called having an out of body experience. See what I'm saying? And in that dimension is a whole nother lighter universe. It's based on density. Your, your, your consciousness is existing in these different dimensions based upon it becoming light or heavy. And in a, in a, in a realm of the spirit that translates to uh, knowledgeable or dumb as hell. So heavy would be you don't know much. Light would be you know a lot, like the not the light bulb. Knowledge, light is like a, a a propelling force to get you to the next level. In other words, our consciousness. Mm, it, the, the, yeah, yeah. Let me let me just say this real quick. Our consciousness, the physical world, so-called physical world around us, is a simulation. It's a veil. It's a layered reality that ain't really real. It's those vibrational signatures that uh, divine being talked about earlier when we had the virtual goggles up. But behind this layered metaverse simulation is more simulations. And what's determining which one you're in is based upon how bright your consciousness is expanded. And that represents how bright your light is. You can see beyond this veil if your consciousness expand brighter and in your next incarnations, you'll script these veils off because you're grown out of this. These universes are really like classrooms or universities. And you can't pass forward until you understand the functions and mechanisms because in order to connect with the creator, you got to understand the creation. It's almost like a damn game. Well, you can't make it out until you, and there's so many ways to make this connection. You can be into botany. You can be into music. You can even be into martial arts. And all, no matter what you into, the physics behind what's allowing you doing what you do will always can sink back to this one divine truth to get you out of the simulation or, or whatnot. But I'm going to stop right there. I don't want to go yeah, too Yeah, let me add to that. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if you join the... Um, embodiment celestial university where my book is sold at um you can become a member and you can it teaches you how to have outer body experiences and how to meditate and keep still and why you and how to how to have those outer body experiences and also you get a free pdf of the hearth book if you can't get the whole book you can get a pdf version which you have to print out or you could just get the pdf for now and scroll through it and then once you have money you can buy the book but you have free access to the pdf file uh, oh that's dope book. yeah, yeah. Hey, bro, Sanchez. Um, what's up, Divine Ben? This is Alkaline. You got yeah, it. this is Alkaline City. Um, you know, and I'm quite sure you know me from you know you've seen me on Bro Sanchez throughout the years, and um, you know that my lifestyle is based through Doctor Sabi and the Doctor Sabi lifestyle. And I heard I heard what you were saying. I heard you mention Doctor Sabi. Um, but I want to get into that. But I just want to touch on real quick what Bro Sanchez was saying. Um, about the human body being like you know an advanced robot we which is exactly what the human body is it's god's creation our creator's creation of a robot we're the most advanced biotech you know uh simulation there is you know and um our soul it just earths the 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 vessel itself and that's pretty much what it is you know it just becomes a a natural amodity to the vessel and you know um we're basic just you know what Bro is saying consciousness, uh, soul awareness and essence, you know, and when our essence, you know, goes through these transgressions and these transcensions, you know, that's when you really become a light being and you really, you know, will understand who your true light aura is and who your true inner self is because, you know, it's, that's why um, we shouldn't be afraid of death. We shouldn't be afraid of death. It's like what um what what did I heard the brother divine Door to the ether. No, what what did you say before? You said it was a oh we're a, 
this our vessel is just a a temporary you know a, a commission until you know our next ascension so you should always un understand that this is only a temporary commission this vessel you know it, it, yeah it, you it, have uh, let me say this you have minerals plants animals humans and then angels so being a human you're you, you it's like privilege like you should be like you weren't a snake you weren't a cockroach not that those are bad cockroaches are extremely intelligent they can survive extreme radiation because because everything is a reflection of divine intelligence we're all fractals of god so everything has its own uh reduced intelligence but it's all intelligent. And basically us, yes, uh, we want to maximize our human body potential, mind, body, and spirit. And the foods is very key. And yes, Dr. Sebi is like one of my greatest heroes. He saved my life. I went cold turkey vegan. It's funny saying cold turkey, but I went cold turkey three years ago. Never yeah, looked back. Is, yeah, yeah this, is, this, this is what I was going to ask you um, getting into that. Um, so you mentioning um, Dr. Sebi means that, you know, you're familiar with, with uh, our alkaline electric diet. And so what is your form of diet? Uh, it's, it's alkaline foods only. I have his Dr. Sebi's nutritional guide. He, he's a biochemist, natural healer. He says, I was not indoctrinated. So he's not a doctor. He's a biochemist and a naturalist. He, uh, he went and tested the pH of every fruit, vegetable, and plant that's out there. And he said, avoid walnuts, almonds, pecans, and pistachios and peanuts, but, but walnuts and Brazil nuts are good. And hemp seeds and sesame seeds, yes, sir. Hemp seeds and sesame seeds. So yeah, if you get his nutritional guide, you can print it out or just <laughs> screenshot it on Google. He tells you which which are the good salts, like Himalayan or, or sea salt. And he tells you which spices to get, like cayenne pepper powder, which mushrooms are good. And he tested the pH, which means the potential of hydrogen. So meat, if you cook meat, it's going to have a low potential of hydrogen because you're you're evaporating all the liquids. It's just a hard chunk of solid. There's no water in there. Where's the potential of hydrogen? And that's what I do. I, I live off his nutrition new guide. You know, I even have on on um, TikTok. I have a I used to have a YouTube cooking channel, Alkaline uh, YouTube. They flagged that they deleted my channel. Um, I got a TikTok so, channel. I haven't put up any new videos, but that's what I live off of an alkaline cooking diet. So so you live off of an alkaline diet, eating everything from the nutrition new guide. Right. So now with that being said, um, do you, where do you get your recipes from? Do you go to like Ty's Conscious Kitchen? Heck yes, Ty's Conscious Kitchen. Also, everybody, you can go to the Embodiment Celestial University and he'll, he has all of them listed there. I would say you guys, should, you guys should all go there. Because um, listen, when, when, when Ty's Conscious Kitchen first got on YouTube, it was me and him. We were the only two making recipes on YouTube. And both of our recipes, b believe it or not, what a lot of people don't know is Dr. Sabi is the original Ty's Conscious Kitchen. Dr. Sabi had, uh, when he first created his nutrition new guide he also created a, a recipe book and it's old like hey, i used to have um, had um, the original um, copy the, the, the divine being already tell you how he's a young brother that's been following dr sebi for a minute because i stepped out just briefly i had yeah the recipe. yeah, yeah said, that yeah. that's what we're getting into um, um dr okay, sebi yeah, talks facts. right now yeah, he been on it yeah. well yeah well how old are you um um just i'm, um, I'm 26 be honest 26 okay so i'm i'm 44 years old i'll be 45 so I've been studying Dr. Sebi since I was 32, right? Um, that's when I found Dr. Sebi back in 2010, right? I started looking into his, you know, his practices in 2012. I started um, committing to the Dr. Sebi Nutrition New Guide in 2014, right? That's when I found Dr. Sebi's cookbook. I found out that he had his own cookbook. So I jumped on YouTube in 2016, and then that was when Ty's Conscious Kitchen came out, and we were back and forth um, battling each other on recipes. And Ty, you know, he was going, he was going well, hard. He was throwing back to back and back and forth recipes. That's when I found Bro Sanchez. That's when Bro Sanchez got on YouTube and was doing all of his talkings, and we all hooked up together. But with that being said, I I I love what you're doing, and I and I'm and I'm glad that you know we have young brothers like hey, you hey. that are still pushing mm -hmm. this narrative. But I, I want to ask you one more thing. So what would you say to a young brother that's in your age range that is a meat eater that swears meat is the end or be all? The, the strongest, biggest, longest living organisms on earth are vegan. No meat. And uh, we, our cells need hydrogen. When you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. So if you eat watermelons and apples, it's like drinking watermelon juice, eating, drinking apple juice, drinking orange juice. So all these fruits that we think are solid, they're actually liquid. 
Only meat is not a, you can't, you can't juice a chicken leg. And what do you, if you blend a, chi, a, a turkey leg, you're going to get grinded bones, blood and meat. Where's the juice? You can never put a, a chicken in a blender and, and make it a juice. All the foods I eat, I can make it into a liquid juice. That's, that's because you, your cells need hydrogen. You're not hungry. You're thirsty. That's a fact. So, so that's you're a telling, good way to put it, man. And, and you're telling people that you're feeding your cells. No, yes. I think, Dr. I Sebi think, calls it intercellular cleansing and re-nourishment of the body. You're just keeping yourself always at a... But go ahead, Sanchez. I think juicing also is another way to detox according to Sebi 2 alkaline, right? Well, juicing is actually eating. It's another form of eating. Well, you're okay, yeah. It, it, it's like saying I take mushrooms, right? And I throw mushrooms in the blender, right? With spring water and I blend it now to a liquid. And I drink it, right? It's juicing, but I actually ate because it's food. It don't matter whether it, you eat it in the solid form or you turn it into a liquid form. It's cell food. Either way, Electric it's going to feed. Food. Yeah, either way, it's going to feed your cell. That's now, the per that's the purpose of eating that people don't understand. People they think eating is because they see cheese melting on top of a burger, or they see <laughs> whipped cream and hot fudge dripping off of an ice cream sundae. That's enticement, you know. That right there, that that is a desire, you know. That that's all it is. It's something to get you, you know, um, you know, at a attention towards that item and make you want to grasp and, and, and take that item into you. That's all and it let, is. And let, and let me say this. When, when I discovered Ty's Conscious Kitchen, I made the mushroom walnut tacos. I want to check out your recipes too, because I'm pretty sure you got other ones that Ty doesn't have. But uh, um, the mushroom, it's portobello mushroom with walnuts. You blend it and you get the mushiness and the crunchiness of a real taco with spelt bread. So I gave it to my mom, my dad, my brothers. They thought it was actual meat. Like they didn't have no idea it was mushroom. So yeah, I, it's, I, it's like it's like we've been like bamboozled, like like when they take a tablecloth and they move it really fast and the cup stays there. But you don't you don't notice that they just took the tablecloth from under you un, right under our noses. And uh, another thing is I was telling Killer Priest, he was fascinated. Instead of egg omelets with chicken eggs, you can make an, a chickpea omelet. Chickpea omelet, I do all the time. And, and it, it's like it's egg yolk, right? It's yellow. It looks the same. Yeah, yeah it looks. So it, it looks that's why I'm like, bro, we've been so bamboozled. And if you put See, the real. Uh, yeah, go ahead. An another another thing is too right um um walnuts and mushrooms are meat they're not they're a natural source of meat right so we don't have to what well, people they think that meat you need meat for protein so people that's the myth the myth are you need vitamin a you need vitamin c you need vitamin d you need vitamin e there's only one thing that our body needs it's called natural minerals right you there's two things in the world that are that, that are there for our body there's natural minerals and unnatural minerals a unnatural mineral is a hybrid or a gmo anything that's a poison a natural mineral is anything that that our creator put on this earth and when you eat anything that's a nat that's natural it adds natural minerals to your body what is natural minerals natural minerals are cell i got food. you check this our out cell food yeah, that's right cell so look I, I want bro sanchez to go after this but check this out um this is a book called George Carey, The Zodiac and the Salts of Salvation. It's called your cells because they're made by salt. So when you burn a body, the ashes of the human body would contain the 12 cell salts. So that's what your body's made of, the 12 cell salts. So when you burn a body to its ashes, what do you find? Potassium phosphate, sodium sulfate, potassium chloride, calcium fluoride, magnesium phosphate, potassium sulfate, sodium phosphate, calcium sulfate, silica, calcium phosphate, sodium chloride, and ferrous phosphate. So you find, the, you find potassium phosphate in Brazil nuts, sodium sulfate in kale, potassium chloride in apples, calcium fluoride in mushrooms, magnesium phosphate in cherries, silica in strawberries. So you need these minerals and they're in the plants. It doesn't say sodium chloride is found in, in chickens, uh, ferrous phosphate from cows. I mean, you could get it from cows, but it's because the cows got it from plants. So you just yeah. need those minerals. So Let me ask you one no, question. Ho, 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 ho. I got I to gotta hop in right here. Alkaline, I want to say salutes to you, bro. I, I don't want you to go nowhere, but I'm going to put you in a waiting room for a second because I want you to stay on on a private call after the show. Uh, and Well, I want to holler at you for about some, about some stuff. But check this out. I got to let uh, Divine Bane take control over this steering wheel and um, go to his 
callers that he, because listen, the people that join this call, they got different questions for him. And uh, since he given us his time, which is precious, uh, we're going to definitely get these callers in and, and we don't want to spend too much time yeah. on, on that. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Pick this brother's brain. Mm -hmm. He's a deep Man, brother. I got a question. Ask him about I've magnetism. <laughs> his, 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 hey, if you go into the magnetism and the release of energy, he's going to really go deep on that. Yeah, bro, into... Sanchez, you said, yeah. you said the blood has magnetism on Sinetta, correct? Yeah. You said what? The blood? Oh, yeah. Well, I would say that the way that everything is based upon the secrets of magnetism and the principles of it, including the blood, how it flows around the heart is how light flows around a black hole. So we can gonna think pass. about like, let, let me say this. Your heart is that magnet. Uh, it's 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 uh, your heart. So the heart, the a magnet has repelling and attracting while your heart is repelling the red blood out and it's attracting the blue blood in. So, yeah, it's all magnetic. The only reason your heart is pumping, going out and in, is because that's what a magnet does. It's constantly repelling and attracting. It's a toroidal motion going in and out, in and out. That's why that's why your heart is like a magnet on its side with the North Pole as the arteries going out and the South Pole as the veins going in. That's it. That's why. Hey, can I ask a quick question? What is your perspective on a messianic figure? Do you think we will have one eventually or no? Pro Sanchez is one. I'm one. You could be one. I was See, about like, to say, you're that's one. That's a good answer, yeah. bro. It's like this. Hell yeah. That's Neo, a good answer. Neo is actually Tom Anderson. He becomes Neo when he wakes up after he meets Morpheus. So we are all Neo, the Tom Anderson workers, when we're asleep. So people say we want to, let's go down the rabbit hole. I say we're born in the rabbit hole. My book is going to take you out of the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. It's like coming out of Plato's cave. So I, I don't say let's go down the rabbit hole. That's just, that's kind of like Nikola Tesla said, Insane people think deeply, so I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. He said, "Sane people think clearly." The difference between insane and sane is depth. People, people who think deep can be quite insane. People who think clearly can be quite sane. That's literally what Nikola Tesla said. So, so Which, coming out of the coming out of the rabbit hole, realizing that we were born in a bunch of lies. Go ahead. And, and Nikola Tesla was insane his damn self, <laughs> but he was on. to a degree. <laughs> Shit, I, just I said, like the, I, the darkness coming but, out the rabbit hole, coming into the light. Well, I definitely got a question about what y'all was just building on with alkaline because it has to do with how you said we all have codons, you know, a certain structure with the binary code, right? So I wanted to ask y'all, what exactly do y'all think, like, according with, you know, fucking being a everything is light, everything is vibration, what exactly is the digestive system in its purpose, being that we digest everything? We're digesting what you're saying right now. We have to let that sit with us so we can pick out our... So look, uh, truth and false, right? Uh, so I want to say, like, what do you, what do, you, what is it to y'all? Pretty much, you feel. So me? look, it's more energy. Uh, when you when you eat meat, you're gonna need three meals: breakfast, lunch, and dinner, because you're not getting the hydrogen you need at the beginning. If you were to just drink fluids in the morning, you don't need lunch, dinner, and a midnight snack. The reason you need nice. lunch and you're still hungry is because you're not satisfying your cells. So a horse is vegan. It's actually up for 21 hours a day and only sleeps for three hours. A, mm. a tiger is the opposite. A tiger sleeps for 21 hours and is only up for three hours because it has to break down the meat for 21 hours. A tiger is strong and it's fast, but it's only up three hours a day. You know how lethargic that is? Yeah, that's, it can't even catch lethargy. half of its prey because it began oh. outran type shit, you feel me? Yeah, so horses, uh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, that's why we call it horsepower, but go ahead, Sanchez. Yeah, I wanna just say I something. I have a question. If you don't wanna, okay, go ahead with your question. For sure, call us before me, you go ahead. Oh, wait, hold on. My bad, my bad. So would you say meditation is pr practically um, digestive too? Isn't that a digestive system in itself? It, being so, meditating? so meditating would be like you're trying to reach a point when you meditate. You're trying to transcend, right? So you're trying to mm -hmm. climb up to the top of this hill. So if you eat meat, it's like you're carrying rocks up that hill. It's going to be harder for you. It's easier if you're vegan to climb up the hill and reach where you're trying to reach to transcend. Oh, no, nah, no, nah. I feel you, but I'm not even talking about on the physical spectrum. I'm talking about what do you think the digestive is when it comes to the mental, spiritual, and physical oh, yeah. body type when, shit. Like, you have so, to shed layers, how they say, you water, know, you go through shit. Water holds memory. So if you're eating an animal that was ripped apart from its parents and tortured and put on a conveyor belt in a slaughterhouse, then you're going to absorb all there this. There you go. You're going to absorb all this suffering energy exactly. when, when you eat that food. That's why mm -hmm. even if you do eat meat, <clears throat> there's a lot of meat eaters out there who are still healthy and strong. And I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's but no meat has ever cured AIDS. Veganism cured AIDS. So if you want to know the truth, veganism, you will never get yeah. sick. Meat will give you the risk of sickness. But I, I, go ahead. 
Ain't no meat based. Ain't no meat based medicines. All medicines are plant based, herb based. So there you when, go. Like Doctor said, he cured sickle cell anemia. When your blood plasma, the cell of a blood, the, pl the blood plasma cell turns to a sickle. It breaks down to a sickle because mucus is breaking down that plasma cell. What you need to do is drink your aged urine, which is your fermented urine. It turns into ammonia, which becomes Fuck more bleach-like. This <laughs> urine, the urine, when you drink it, it, gets into your bloodstream and it kills the mucus, which reunites the cell. And that's how he cured sickle cell anemia. Now you have to take in a lot of ferrous, uh, ferrous oxide, no, fer iron phosphate, to uh to re-nourish the cells and give it that to, to bind it and hold it together. So literally mucus breaks apart your cells. And when you kill the when you get rid of mucus, it reunites the cell. And and only, well, not only, but aged urine does that. That's how you cure blindness. So, that's how uh, that's uh, how uh, Dr. Uh, Sabi cured his blindness as well. Cool, cool. We, hold on, hold on, Echoline. We got a we got a rotation going. You can grab So he wasn't crazy. Hold on, hold on, JT. Hold on, we gotta be mindful of all the people that's waiting to uh, build with divine being. Some of them may have a book, they may not have the book. We wanna see what their questions are and whether they even get to see this brother the first time too. Let this brother connect, man, with the uh, people real quick, y'all. It's uh, one at a time. We gonna rotate everybody. Go ahead, who, who we got? Me, myself, salutes to you, brother, that you even, hold up, man. Did my brother, me, yes, myself, get the mic yet, man? Did you get the mic? Oh, no, I'm just, in, I'm just in here kicking it. Yeah. Hey, no, no, good. no. You got the mic, bro, right now. You got it All right now. Bet. Yo, what's yeah. good, bro? What's good, Divine? What's good? What's uh, up, brother? Panel. What's good, everybody? What's good, Alkaline? Um, yo, the most in impactful thing that I've heard Dr. Sebi talk about was elderberry. Because it just clicked something in my mind, because we know about uh, monatomic gold, right? Um, but elderberry is special because it's really high in iron. And iron is the key to magnets. And so what it clicked in my mind was, what it connected, um, was even further how magnetic we are as electromagnetic beings, right? Because that itself is godlike to me that we can't eat that metal. But what, what happened was divine, through divine design, there's a fruit that's actually connected to that actual ore that we can eat. And so that expound my research and my understanding how I connected the dots with certain things. Um, also, uh, shout out to uh, Divine. I'm definitely gonna get that book because you know when I come out with mine, I want other people, you know, promote, uh, to, um, get mine as well. But uh, Every, shout yeah, because every, everybody uh, in the sure. community, right, gonna have everybody's books. And exactly. we're gonna do shows where we all the people come together and and and, and build on our shit too, man. That's what's up. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, like a real tribe for sure. But my main question was right. Um, <laughs> well, I just wanted to let. Well, uh, here's the thing. In the beginning, the first rain came out the earth, and y'all, you showed on your little graph how the actual arc of the Taurus field right comes out of the center pole, and so. A lot of people forget that it didn't come from the sky down the first actual rain that uh and from that dust man was formed not out of clay but um the 12 the new jerusalem what do you think the anna because they're the 12 foundational stones in uh revelation are anisotropic stones which means when you slice them and shine laser through them they shine the whole spectrum diamonds don't do that but all 12 of them are anisotropic right what do you think the significance of that is in Revelations? Because you broke down the 12 disciples being the Zodiac, the Mazaroth, et cetera. But yeah, how you feel about uh, the 12 and, uh, and isotropics? Uh, I got to do more research on that. Me too. Oh, no. Okay. Y'all good. I got a question. But yeah. It, yeah. But, yeah, but I want to say this, but the elderberries does have the, the um, they're super good. Super good. They have a, a difference. There, there's two irons. There's good iron and bad iron. The bad iron is iron oxide, which is like a rusty nail. A rusty nail is iron ferrous oxide. Elderberries has iron phosphate, not iron oxide, iron phosphate, ferrous phosphate, same thing, but yeah. And, and, and let me say salutes to the new people joining on. Let me get a but mic just, check from uh, Gleams. I got an order salute. going, I see the hands, I got y'all. Salute King, can you hear me? Yeah, we yes, can Kings. hear you loud. And I'm waiting. 
Yeah, I'll back down now until until you're ready. One. Hey, hey, Gleam, okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that that was I had the avatar was suspicious. Jeff C, you got the floor. Go ahead. Hey, guys, how are you, man? We fine. Can you Go hear ahead. me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Thanks for joining, yeah, so Jeff. I just wanna, thank you. Uh, Sanchez, by the way. One, one more thing. Mad, yeah. Sorry, brother. Um, For me, myself, listen, brother, I saw you have two AirPods in your ear, and I have to tell you, that is very detrimental to your pineal gland, the, the most important AirPods. of your... Now, listen, you can have one in. You don't just don't put both of them in. I would actually just get wired ones, but let me tell you why. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. No, because, because one, one of those AirPods connects to your phone and the AirPods connect to each other, which means the frequency is going through both of your ears. So that's not mm -hmm. good. A, a wired headphones, the energy doesn't go through the middle of your brain. It's going through the wire or not through the, the wire. wire. It actually, let me explain something about copper wires and electricity. The electricity doesn't go through the wire. What happens is each atom, the, the copper wire itself is made up of a bunch of copper atoms, right? Well, these atoms are high-fiving each other. So the electricity is just like kinetic energy when, when they high-five each other in a, like a sequence, like, like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. But go ahead. All right. Bruh. Am I back on or? Hey, to everybody using AirPods, y'all need to go ahead and take notes. Yeah, on I, the, got, I got I one in right now. Said, it's like they high-fiving. <laughs> Yeah, Chain I get it. Hell high yeah. five I never wear it with them AirPods. Yeah. That's wicked. Facts. And you know it's what? Kind of, I want to tell y'all too. Uh, show I show was, my screen, bro, Sanchez. Oh, I got you. Hold on. Let me pin pin your joint. Go this ahead. This is this is it. really important. Okay, the Egyptians. Do you guys know this move right here? Yeah, I see yeah, that. that this is, that this dance, is the atom, yeah. and when the electricity goes through, the heads are like the head touches <laughs> one wall and hits the other wall. <laughs> so the electricity is traveling like that. Bouncing off each other. Yeah. yeah. So the way y'all hit people with logic and just simple shit to tell the truth is crazy. Y'all do it. That makes sense. This shit that's, crazy. that's the genie in the lamp using the head. That's the genie in the arms. That's the lamp and shit. That's, so, yeah. 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 that's yeah. crazy, man. And, and, and look, let me say this too. We all using y'all phones. Yo, that speaker phone is your best friend. I hate to put that shit on my ear, y'all. Hey, bro, my elbow be hurting this shit. But go ahead. <laughs> you right. I just thought I was gonna be, you know, fa you know, a little fancy, uh, with pants, pancy and pancy today. But uh, yep. What, 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 ain't never what, seen me with this. What, what stone is that there, you man. you wearing? Me myself. That's la what stone? Oh, this is a uh, turquoise. Okay, I got you. Oh yeah. Yep. Hey, hey, absolutely. Hey, Je Jeff, who, who was it? And listen, guys. Yeah, I, I was probably waiting. So I let just, me tell right, you. Let me it. tell you the compounds of turquoise. Turquoise is actually oxidized copper. That's why the Statue of Liberty looks teal. It's yeah. copper. Yes, yeah, <laughs> sir. Mm. That's crazy, right there. That's tur. I always say that color blue that the Statue of Liberty is. That's turquoise blue. Gotcha. Go ahead, I Jeff. I seen pennies turn that blue too. I go can't ahead. talk. <laughs> no, let Jeff C go, y'all. Real talk. I just want, first want to just to say, uh, uh, Bro Sanchez, that was an amazing uh, interview with the, with Dollar yesterday. Unbelievable! Thank you so much. You're you're you're, you're climbing up the ladder, my friend. I and uh, I just want to build on. I just want to build on what he was saying about the blue blood and the red blood oxidizing inside of the uh, the heart. Uh, that is also why the military uh, gives you a purple heart because when the blue and red mix, it becomes purple, um, which creates a dynamo. Um, that's one thing. And the real question I had here was the astro astrological wheel. Uh, I, I feel like they've manipulated the wheel, meaning are we on the right time? Because if you go out and you look at solarium and you look at the sun in a certain, uh, const uh, in a certain house or constellation, it's off from what they tell you you were born in. So that's what's between tropical and sidereal astrology. That's right. Tropical will always be tropical. It does never change. Uh, a sidereal changes, but guess what? Sidereal will line up with tropical once again because it was lined up before, wasn't it? Well, it actually realigns itself every 25,920 years. So we go by tropical as far as our birth date. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, the tropical, the, the frequencies will always be there even though you say like, like Santo says he's an Aries, but they say, no, you're a Pisces. He's like, no, I'm Aries because I was born March 20, 24th and Aries is March 21st. So even though sidereally it changed, uh, the, the permanence of the tropical, like the, it, it's still there in, in the background. So um, you, could, you could interpret both of them. They, they both matter, but tropical 
it's going to line up again, which means it's, it's more, tro- it will always be tropical. Like it always comes back to being like Aries will be in Aries. Cancer will be cancer. But right now, like basically, let me put it this way for every, so every, everybody can understand a baby can understand when the sun is in Aries, it's spring. The sun is on, on the equator. When the sun is in cancer, it's summer. And the sun is in the North hemisphere. It's not on the equator. When the sun is in Libra, it's on the equator again. And when the sun is in winter in Capricorn, it's above Australia. And that's why North hemisphere has winter. So what's happening is uh, when the, right now, when the sun is in Aries, it's not spring. It's not on the equator. It's something else. It's, it's Aquarius. That's why they say we're in the age of Aquarius, because check this out. If you use stellarium at 6 a.m. on March 21st, the sun will rise. What, what sign is going to be behind the sun when it rises for the next 2000 years? Aquarius. So yes, we call it March 21st. We say it's Aries, but actually Aquarius is behind the sun. But soon Aries will be behind the sun again. So that's because every spring in, in tropical astrology, th- th- that's when the sun is in Aries. But right now it's not in Aries. It's, it's every spring for the next 2000 years, the sun will enter Aquarius. So that, that's just a way for you to understand. I don't want to confuse sure, anyone, sure. but, but yeah. no, no, I understand. Uh, and is that the reason why uh, the, the, the alchemical sign for Libra is the sun rising? Or setting, setting. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. That, uh, the horizon. It's like a, it's like a half sun. Exactly. You're right. Right. And it's setting in, in Aries. Because the, the, the 12, yeah, the, the 12 month wheel spring, summer, fall, winter is also the 24 hour clock. So like 6 a.m. to 10 is Aries, 10 to 12 is Taurus, 12 to 2 is Gemini, Mm -hmm. or my bad, 6 to 8 is Aries, 8 to 10 is Taurus, so like that. So you have the 24-hour wheel, in the morning at 6 a.m. it's Aries, at 6 p.m. it's Libra. You see that? 6 a.m. is Aries, 6 p.m. is Libra, 12 12 p.m. is afternoon, which is Cancer, and 12 midnight would be Capricorn. So yeah. Right. So when the sun goes from from Libra to, uh, to Aries, sunrise, sunset... That creates the dome, the dome of your head. Aries is the ram, correct? And that's where memory is stored. And the le- memory is stored in the ram, which creates the Libra, Aries, which me- that's what we call but, it. But see, that, so this is so important for flat earth, because if it's true that the pole that, see, uh, the Egyptians had Thuban as their pole star. I explained this on the Killer Priest podcast. That, yeah, star, that, that star will be the pole star again. And, and just like I said, Aries will be, a, Aries will be the tropical again. That can't happen on a globe because we're supposed to be getting tighter and tighter in the Milky Way, getting sucked in by the black hole at the center of our supposed galaxy. How we, can the star? Yeah, the stars should be different. We basically got a new, if the center is a throne, each star is a new king assuming the throne in their time, basically. Uh, and and, and that, that's crazy because these seven luminary, when you just said Thuban, Right, because I want to understand something. You're telling me, and and I already know the answer to this, but I just want you to clarify on it. There's a different star that's aligned with Polaris every. Uh, I wouldn't know the exact amount of years. Yeah, me it, neither, because it's actually different for every pole star. It's it's not like every thousand years is a new star because yeah. there could be a, there could be a space of blackness for a moment. You might not have any pole star, and the pole star will be next to the point where the pole star would be like Polaris is not actually 90 degrees. It's a little bit off. So that means it's shifting. But, but technically if, if you were to live a human life, which is like, usually people die like 60, 70, you would not even notice a change. So within our lifetime, you say it doesn't change, mm-hmm. but it does change after like 2000 years, a little bit. So um, like th- there's a point for like, maybe like 10,000 years, we wouldn't even have a pole star. It would just be blackness at the center. But then after that 2000, 10,000 years, you'll see a little star start make its way to the center right there. Mm. So it's actually, it's random. Yeah. Damn. I appreciate it. It's not it, random, but it's just not like, it's not like coincise. Hey bro, let me ask him a question. I got a question for you for the divine being. So I heard you mention before the black sun. So um, I take it you study societies. Oh yeah, all of them. They they all have a little bit of truth to them. So you studied sure. the. So do you know like Masons about, and Illuminati? Do you know anything about the Vril Society? You love to go to that Vril Society. Hey, <laughs> bro. I, I, no, I, no, I, no I, the, reason, the, reason, the reason I asked about the you Vril Society yeah, you got is because he's talking about Flat Earth and he mentioned the Black Sun. Yeah, when he you went in with that. 
when you go into flat earth and the black sun the black sun is is the earth's core and you know that's where that's where all that's dark matter that's where all that's the, the source of all creation yeah that's what that's the ether that's where everything comes from and that's what the real society harnesses that's what ether is it's real energy so i just wanted to know well, if you got into it and if you did can you elaborate a bit on your end on it yeah they want to harness uh, the love energy uh, the energy they they want to um see look remember the monsters inc movie this is how i know i don't think i know in monsters inc the it's called monsters incorporated and their job is to scare children to harness their energy adrenochrome get, not, get. not only that at the end of the movie no do you know that do you know that uh, yeah they, they, yeah that's, they, a, that, they, that's when, adrenochrome when they shake the baby uh the baby gets adrenaline and that adrenaline it's it, your adrenal glands re release the adrenaline chemical in your blood so then they drink the blood because it's filled with the adrenaline from the gland no i'm saying in monster zinc when they're yeah when, the, the, when the tube fills up it goes with and the, it's filled with, the, blood. with the scare yeah. that's adrenochrome <laughs> of course yeah. but what i'm saying is this at the end of monster zinc they can get more energy by not making them scream and capturing the sound of them going, ah, they, they capture the sound of them laughing. Laughter is actually more energy than the screaming of them. So at the end, so instead of making them scream at the end of the movie, Mike Wazowski was making the children laugh and he, and he filled up like 20 million, like 20 tubes. So I feel like the real society, like they want to harness this energy. It's because they're just following the leader, like following like the blind leading the blind. And if, if we told them like, Yes, you can harm, you can you can live long if you if you drink adrenochrome from a baby. Like I'm sure it works, but I would never want to do that because I have a son. You know, I wouldn't want someone to drink my blood. Like I want to live to be old. So if, if we told the real society, like you don't have to drink adrenochrome, you can still live long by doing the right way. But they're gonna say, no, nah, it's too much work. I'd rather just suck the blood out of the babies because I don't have to, I don't have to be funny to make and, them laugh. And, and just, let me and, and let, me, let me speak to some about the real society and we can move forward uh uh divine alkaline and all of that when you say real v r v r i l that's another way of saying viral this decide this is basically the underlying society that plants the seed of the paradigm that's viral within the uh mindset of humanity at any given time on earth but let me build on that like um when you talk about viral knowledge the widespread and outspreading of knowledge that's the secrets of saturn or saturation media which is a goddess which is the j word we ain't gonna go into we, we don't want to go too deep with this but the who controls who's viral or not for real that is that's now check this out right that is like in music the more dry a sound is, the more down the middle or mono it is, the more wet it is, it got more effects on it, but it's more stereo separated. So like the viral society is the expansion of information versus the inner implosion of knowledge. Data and information is just viral, um, meaningless data that, that people are processing. But enlightenment is the this if you look at a tourist field the smallest part is the central part but that's the most strongest part and that's the opposite of this what, what i'm telling you about explosion is implosion going within so i don't, don't want to go too deep with this i just wanted to throw that out there for somebody whoever that but yeah let's 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 just go ahead and <laughs> yeah you know. thanks bro and, and can i just yeah, say I one more thing um yo do y'all know that fractals, right? Um, first of all, they were first used in uh, George Lucas, you know, Star Wars um, that we know about. But fractal, the key, the core to the fractal is um, the star David, the seal of Solomon. And that's actually the symbol for the heart, which is green, right? Which is one of the only colors that matches on the Hertz frequency scale, the color to the actual um, sound. And so I just wanted to make sure the, the 528, right? And so they say that that's also why you, this is way in not any other part of the body, but the heart, because that's where um, it originates and spreads, uh, expands out into infinite, from the finite, the most infinite point. Um, like you was just talking, just uh, sinking back into that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there, food for thought. Yeah.
here's what I mean. Like, if you look at this whole concept of real, is what I was saying about expansion. The, the now this was talked about in the common race, but see that common race. Let me show y'all some real quick. Divine being, let me uh go deep with this. You probably find this interesting too. This common race ain't new. If we look at images like this right here, what this shows is that we created the simulation, we created the human body, and what it is is a holographic shell of a soul. And when we look at images like this right here, it's the same as what we see for the real society. This common race is a race of holographic projected beings. And that's what I keep showing y'all. Let me pull it up right now. This ain't nothing I'm making up. This is what's really going to be, whether you like it or not, because it's part of an initiative. So hold on. The people that this is the what they're trying to do. That's why I, when he was talking about turquoise blue, the color of the Statue of Liberty, the color of the God Happy, the color of Krishna, the avatars, blue Smurfs. Uh, the Smurfs with the cone hat on and that they're blue, that's the God Aten right here. You see that? And here go the, the blue cone, all that from the holographic human. So my thing is like... um. Yeah, that's why they're called yeah. indigo children. You got it. Yeah, take it over, man. I, yeah, take that from there. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Um, the the color, the rainbow color, uh, Roy G. Biv. In school, we were taught about the rainbow colors. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So, yeah, that blue is high frequency. That's like the the the, the coagulation of all the energy to a point. The thousand petal lotus. Yeah. And. Uh, I was going to say something else. Let me let me get my train of thought back. See, they got the, the Statue of Liberty is an old Babylonian goddess. In college, they call her the Alma Mater. She pops out of this box. You can see her popping up out just like Christ with his arms out. And that's the statue. But this the thing about Jack coming out the box. The box that she coming in is this cube of light, what we call in the aura field. This little triangle that's covering this human right here like an umbrella let me show you what that is on another picture this is what it is see that triangle wraps around his body and it makes another one on his feet and it traps him in like a diamond which is the opposite of the that's the inner core of this macabre let me show you some real quick oh let me say this well, we have we have this dome above the earth, but it's not just like a dome, like a petri dish with the, like like a pot, like like a like a, like, a, like a serving tray where you remove the top. The obviously mm -hmm. the dome is produced out of the center, and it's it's a torus field. So we're we're in this tor toroidal bubble with the plane of inertia being the plane of earth. So as above, so below. If you have a a seed like an acorn and you plant it, the branches go above the ground and the roots go underneath the seed even deeper than where the seed was. So, so that's why people say, what's under the earth? Well, well, you know, we're not sure, but just like a seed, the, the roots, roots the, 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 the tree can only extend as high as the roots go deep. The deeper the roots, the higher the tree will go. And that's, so that's and, and yeah. you know what, based on what, and I've taught what you just said almost verbatim. And one thing that I sum it up as saying is, we don't just grow up, we grow down too. We grow up and down. What happens at the waistlines, the feet grow toward the ground. Your feet are growing toward the ground, but from the waist up, that's growing toward the sky. Just that's like right, because your knees get longer and your, your legs stretch. So yeah, from, mm -hmm. from, from the belly button point, like your arms and legs are just growing out from the belly button. So we're getting, we're getting stretched apart all the way until we decompose and there's nothing else. Ripper or the ripper effect, we're being ripped. In so many words. So yeah, so yeah, uh, that that's that's that is that that's called expanding universe. So you know, at the prime of life is when it is like a bomb that releases its energy and it's at its most um, impactful point in the explosion process. We call that the prime of life. Then after that, ain't nowhere to go but downhill from that 
climb up the mountain and all the dust and debris started getting sucked back into the middle of the uh, uh, same thing that threw it out. And that is old age when your skin start drawing into your bones, implosion, and you withering away. We're actually playing out that same, and that's what this real, this common race represent, that the people that crack the code of how life expands from birth will also create, will reduplicate that in the form of this new race of holographic humans that we see here. This is the common race that we're talking about, the real race. But I'm going to fall back and let the callers go ahead and ask as many questions as they want until we get ready to close out. So let the people that haven't, you know, speaks go ahead. I think it's on Gleam. Yes, bless, bless. Yeah, sorry about the avatar. It's, it's 12 o'clock midnight over in the UK here, and I've, I've got kids in bed and whatnot, and I didn't want to get lighting up. But either way, keep me in check, bro Sanchez. If I start babbling, lock me off and tell me to shut up. But question to Divine. I heard earlier um, you were talking about the Black Sun and, and how – Ether um, is involved, and Ether has been a, a huge topic of, of of mine or interest of mine. Um, been studying it right the way from Lorenz right the way through to Dirac. Um, but just had one question: Would you entertain the thought that the sun is not powered internally? It's actually powered externally by the ether, and sure. just, as, just as long as it's powered by the ether, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the reason why I say this is that um, I'm not a flat earther, but I've been involved in the scene for about eight years or something. Um, but I, I noticed that um, there's a huge problem or globe earthers always say, ah, flat earthers can't explain why the sun doesn't change size. Now, little do they know, and none of them know, put it that way, that I'll drop it in the chat here, that on the globe earth, we, we, we have a problem where we cannot... Um, we cannot actually explain why the sun is not shrinking. Um, they've measured it, obviously, to the finest, finest arc second. Um, the and sun, they found the, yeah, the, sun, the sun is actually shrinking in a lot of cases, though. But yeah, go ahead. Well, why, yeah, why, do you, why do you say it should be shrinking? Why is that? Because it's burning, well, in their model, it's burning off energy. Oh, and, okay, okay. And so, there's only so much matter. Yeah, they so, say it's going to go to a red giant soon. Exactly, yes. But what they're finding that over the past 12 years of measurements, it hasn't shrunk a bit when it should have. So yeah. th that, that's why I was really trying to bring across the entertaining thought of it's actually powered externally, which I think is a, is, is a, a theory from Electric Universe. And I don't know whether Dollard actually, actually thought that. Um, yeah, but, that's yeah, true. So, because so check, look, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, the there's a YouTuber named Lindsay Harris, Flat Earth Philosophy. He changes his name; it might be something else now. But he he basically explained how the sun is going around the event horizon of the black hole, and everything's happening at the center, like on a micro scale, and it's being it's being magnified hugely onto the theater above the like. Imagine a, a projector at the center of the earth projecting onto the ceiling, and those are all the stars and luminaries. So they're not actually up there. It's all down here on the, on the, where the projector is, and it's being projected up there, but it's micro of the mac, of, it's macro of the micro. And let me show something real quick. When we look at this image right here, one of these cones, right, it has a tail that spirals into the toroidal field. And one of them have, the bottom one have its tail that flow in. At one end of the cone is a black hole. At one end of the cone is a white hole. We call that the sun and we call that the uh, sun and moon, right? So when you look at this, hold on a second. Let me let me mute somebody. They got that COVID. Uh, so check it out, right? So the yin and yang shows what I'm talking about about a white hole and black hole. You can go and look it up yourself too. At the end of all of the, at the end of any wormhole, you have a black hole and a white hole. If you turn this thing around and rotate it and spin it on the axis inside of a torus field, that'll give you your sun and moon. So here it and is right here. There it is. 
So basically, Brother Sanchez, what they what mainstream science tells us is that the universe exploded and, and they, they give it a past tense, like it exploded. It already happened. But actually, that just gives you the white hole. Where is the black hole? Well, now they say there is a black hole. But the point is, the, the, the Big Bang is wrong because it, it's a past tense, like it was just a Big Bang and it happened. Actually, it's, it's still banging. It's still exploding because it's constantly white hole, black hole, like a big magnet. It's constantly going out. They, they literally tell us that the universe is constantly expanding. So it's still exploding, isn't it? And they say there's a black hole, which is constantly absorbing. So yes, uh, we don't come from the Big Bang. It's not an explosion. That's only half of the picture. It's an explosion and an implosion constantly, and it never stops. So it's still, uh, it's still exploding and imploding right now as we speak. And I can prove that. How? Your heart is beating right now. If you have a child and you die, your heart, your son's child's heart's going to beat without him thinking. So all the way since the Big Bang was the first pulse of the heartbeat. And today our heart is still beating. And it's still, the, the blood is still going out one side and in the other side. Your heart is a black and white hole. Everything mm -hmm. is this. So there. That's, that's what the two triangles of this Merkaba is. It's the black and white hole. You are, let me show y'all some, the piggyback on what he's saying. This cube, Merkuba, Kaba, Merkuba, let me show you what's in the middle of this. This Kundalini concept, this is a candle. This serpent right here is like the stitchings in the middle of a football. It represents the connection point between these two triangles. You see like the yin and yang has this S in the middle. This is so basically when you look at the way this Taurus field is set up, you got a cup above your head, a cup below your feet, but you also got a cup to the right of you and a cup to the left of you. Now that's the four leaf clover that becomes this Jesuit cross. You ever saw this Jesuit cross with like the four trumpets blowing out of the center point? That's what's going on in this Tarota field. And all of these cups are recycling the energy through these four points. The two that's on the left and right, you can call them Rahu and Ketu. The two that's above you and below you, you can call them Polaris and Shio. And let me say this, Bill Sanchez, if you keep that picture up, that's the electromagnetic field of the heart. Now imagine that person standing there as God, whether it's a male or female. So man is the measure of the universe, as Leonardo da Vinci said. So the Big Bang, which is, we, we, we explain now, it's an explosion and implosion. That, that source point would be God's first heartbeat. So right now, this implosion, explosion, like the universe is a being. And we're, we're just little fractals of that. So yeah, uh, the black hole and white hole, when you, when you look at a black hole, you look at a white hole, you're looking at the heart of God, like the, the red blood and blue blood. So yeah, it, it's just all beautiful. When, when you see everything this way, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. And the sun and moon can be, like I said, to the person who brought that up, you can look at them that way. But who, who else we got on the call because we going up to three hours. And let me just say, guys, uh, here is the heart book. I got mine on the way. I was hoping it'll get here before the stream, but yeah, salutes to this. And even on this cover, I can see the Jesuit cross concept that I was just saying right there. But all of these different cardinal directions that's creating the universe around you is being launched out from your heart and it's being spiraling around the body to create this Merkaba cube around you. And this is the symbol of realism that people have brought to me. Let me pull that up real quick. How the energy spirals around from the heart at the center and it launches out into these cartner, these archangels, right? And they are, that's when the energy reaches a point like with an explosion where it can't expand no further. It starts to implode back inward toward the core. And this can go on and on and on. And like, like if I take a basketball and I dribble it to the ground and, and I stop, eventually the dribbling pattern will get lower and lower and lower into smaller waves versus those big waves that me and Divine Being was talking about earlier. You know, because if I'm dribbling a ball at a high rate, that's like those long beams of light. But if you, but if you stop, right, and let it settle, it'll get so 
so low to the ground that it'll settle. But according to science, the basketball never completely settled. It's dribbling at such a nano minute scale, we can't even detect it in our realm. It appears to be settled to us. It's still some space in between the basketball and the ground, according to not only heliocentric science, but because uh, everything is separated by their own torus field and everything have a torus field. So when they say two things never really touching because atoms vibrate, that's kind of what they saying. We all in our own Kaaba interacting, uh, uh, you know. That's right. And that's the, that's the, those two up, the, the top triangle or the top tetrahedron. So that's a double tetrahedron. The top one is fire. The one pointing down is water. And that's, uh, that's like positive and negative. You create your repelling and attracting magnetic field. And I want to, uh, if you can type in uh, this video on YouTube, Brother Sanchez, this would be super enlightening right here. I got but, you. Okay, it's called the Marina Bay Sands Whirlpool Rain Oculus. M-A-R-I-N-A, -A, Marina Bay Sands Whirlpool. I think it'll pop up if you just type that. So wait, wait, Just let me tell, uh, it's going to be I'm the one that it. says, go down. It's the one that says Oculus. Actually, just pick the third one, Singapore. Oh, no, no, wait. Go down. Uh, more. Let me see. Keep going. More. All of Actually, those are dope. Any, any one of them, yeah. Yeah, all of those are dope. I ain't going to lie. Because what, 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 what I'm going to show you is, uh, yes, pause it really quick. So if you pause. So basically, the, all the stars are going around the North Pole, the constellations. Only the luminaries move. The constellations are fixed relative to each other. So the Bible says that the stars are nailed to the firmament. So what we're showing here is that, yes, all this water is going around the center point, but even the water as a body is also doing a spiral. So that, that's not the right one. I want to show you the right one. Okay, let's look at this. Let's see if it does it. And it shows you the fluctuation of the ether because the whole body of water itself is not only spiraling, but it's doing this big old wobbling like those big air balloon dudes with the air thing on them going in a big circle. So and that water is actually recycling itself. So it goes down and it actually comes back up out of the top again. But, but there's another one, Brother Sanchez. It's called rain. Add, add rain oculus to the end of what you typed up there. Okay. Rain space oculus. OC. Okay. It'll, it'll oh, yeah. I'm up. all tripping with the big fingers. But yeah, we. Go, we uh, let's see. Go down. It should be a 48 second one. Keep going. More. Oh, let's, let's do it with short. Let's hold on. Let me do some. Oh, shorts. Let's, let's actually filter it by uh, under four minutes if it's 48 seconds. And, Maybe the one right there. Just put Singapore MB. Yeah, down. Uh, third one. Third one. Go up. You passed it. Three minutes and 32. That one. Gotcha. Let's go to the action here. There we go. Man. I can't remember which one I saw. The point is that as, as the water is going around the center, even that whole body is, is even like it, it, almost, it almost like splashes out of the bowl. You see how that water is in a bowl? Mm -hmm. that whole it's it's not going to extend this is actually a bad example this is not going to extend past where the water is shooting out of but there's there's one of them it's a whirlpool and it, it shows how you the whole body is expanding outward no it just shows how uh i think oh. that one is it let's see go up. oh here go to 48 second okay right here there you go you can see it shifting and it's touching the see how that how it'll actually touch those metal things where the water comes out, but it's doing a rotation. Like it'll get closer to one side. Like the beaches is doing when we at the beach. The, the shore, like the breathing. Yeah. But this is a proof that the, the center of the earth is a vortex and all the stars are like this water going around the center and they don't move relative to each other, but the North pole does change. So how does the North pole shift without the stars shifting? Well, that's because it's just like this. That's exactly what's happening as above, so below. Mm -hmm. 
And whichever star is aligned with this vortex, like what you were saying earlier, we could say that's the one that's getting sucked into the portal at that time. It's like, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, this is, I, I, this is make more sense than anything they tell us. One thing yeah. I wanted to point out about this was we can look at the water spiraling r real fast, but not only when they say that the earth is rotating and revolving, right? So if you look at this, not only is the water spiraling around a central axis, but the whole body of water itself tend to do this big Macro and and see, Sanchez, yeah. this explains how the pole stars change, but they always return again because that's what's happening. And the this, constellations never change. This is magnificent. I got to download this. Yeah, that, that's... Can I just add something to this as well? Because that, that is kind of like the model of Paul Dirac's ether. Uh, he believed that the, the electron is actually a vortex in the ether and it dropping through, the, through that middle central bit is the energy that the electron gets. It was called the Dirac C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that was literally, uh, I mean, he, he published an article in Nature about that. But can I, can I just uh, settle something for people in the chat? Well, they just well, said that... Well, 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 hold on. I want to expound on this video some more. I, I, I like to bring this up. What we're looking at, the Hindu said, this is what happens at the North Pole. Vishnu is churning the Milky Sea. So all of these dudes are like the little rays of ropes that they all wrapping around Vishnu, which is this portal in the middle. And if you could kind of picture this, this is what Mercator was saying is happening. Yeah, go right ahead. I just wanted to add that uh, with this. You got it. Yeah, it was just really settling something. A lot of people, because I've got the English accent, are saying that I'm Craig, fight the flat earth. But it's really ironic because um, just before he was on your show, he had a little bit of heart trouble. And that very day, uh, I was having an argument with him over Twitter about Lorentz ether theory, uh, where he was saying that the speed of light was actually a variable in his theory, and it isn't. So if, either way, I'm not Craig. I am one of Craig's thorns in his sides, put it that way. <laughs> Everybody from the UK sound the same you know, to he, us Americans, so... You yeah. know, I thought about it, but I said, no, nah, that's not uh, correct. He would now you can look, yeah. you can look me up. I'm a reggae hip hop artist. Uh, I've actually uh, released a track called Adjust Your Brightness with uh, a very big reggae star. Put it that way. If you if you smack that in in YouTube, you'll come across me. You'll see my my face. Put it that way. OK. Thank you for joining, too, by the way, man. I appreciate all the musician artists. Let me just go ahead. And, do you want me to give them a taste of your music, man? I don't want to. You will you get on the struck. Spot. No, no, no. You'll get struck. You'll get okay, struck. Me, don't. Let, yeah, oh, yeah, don't do right. that. Let me yeah, not do don't that. Don't do it. But just to explain, Gary Nestor Pine was a former lead singer of the Whalers for eight years, and I've toured with him and and whatnot. So if you want to look into me, yeah, a shameless plug. So sorry, Bro Sanchez. Thank you. Salute. I'm gonna mute. <laughs> hey, salutes, man. Thank you for joining. And uh. Who else we got here? Yo, oh, yeah. Uh, so listen, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I got to go ahead and wrap it up because it's time for me to go ahead and be, uh, you know, get me a little workout, a little dinner, doing a little stuff like that. But this is what I want to say. You guys have made my day with the questions and how deep the bill was with uh, Divine Being. Like, he fit right into this community like I knew he would. This brother doing big things. I want everybody to... Make sure to uh, support him by getting the book, right? Um, you, you, it, the link will always be there. He also mentioned about a free version. I'm going to let him close out now. So I want all of the callers besides Divine Bean to go ahead and, and, and go ahead and hang up yourself from the call. Salutes to y'all, brothers. And I'll be seeing y'all on the next one for sure. Appreciate y'all. One. That's, it's called ascend.embodimentcelestial.com ascend.embodimentcelestial and that's where you can become a, a member and you can get a free download of the PDF and all of our other books will be on there but yeah thank you so much brother Sanchez uh, we're going to be doing many more for sure hey, man listen <laughs> the way that see when, when people was asking you these questions it was going deeper and deeper I can't wait till my book get here I'm going to be doing reviews on it I'm going to be uh, shouting you out 
and uh, you already know, man. But so, uh, one more caller though, Divine Being, Leah S. You you never had the opportunity to uh, speak, so for sure you can close out and say whatever you want, my sister. Hey there, Leah. If she's there. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'm here. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. Um, I didn't have a particular question per se, but it's really funny because I actually bought the Hearth book months ago. And when I saw Bro Sanchez there, I was like, wow, this is like, I'm onto something. He's onto something. Everybody's onto something. So it's really a serendipitous moment to, to this full circle. So thank it's coming, you. It's all coming together. Right. Yeah. I like to say we're, we are all important pieces to the puzzle, all of us. And that's why syncretism is so important. We have to gather all the pieces. And that's why, it, you know, beliefs limit your, your broadening of, of research and knowledge. And one more thing, bro, Sanchez, next time we talk, uh, well, I just want to say this. Um, Vegas is called Sin City and you're in Vegas. Uh, it, it's going to be called Synth City, like synthetic city. They, they want to start with robot maids over there, robots, to clean the rooms. Oh, and the holograms over. Yeah. And, and one thing is they say that robots are going to take jobs, but the way they're going to legitimize it is saying that these robots are not just self-controlled. You can It's going to create jobs because now you get to clean homes from your home because you're remote controlling these robots that are cleaning the house or the apartment or whatever, or the hotel room. So now these robots will be the maids or whatever, but it's going to be controlled by a human who's has the virtual reality headset. So it's going to get crazy soon. So Sin City will be Synth City. So I'll be like, get your butt out of there as soon as you can. But okay. now you know what I mean? Like, it's just, we can change it collectively. It, it's just a lot. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, brother, I just wanted to mention that just to, to get people aware that this is where we're going. I, it's either like merge with nature or merge with technology. And obviously we're, we're pro nature over here. So Appreciate that, man. Most definitely. We definitely got pushed a, a whole merging with nature. A lot of people that hear you say, or oh, either merge with technology, they'll push back on you because a lot of great teachers out here, some I even respect, the paradigm that they're moving to divine is they're looking for um, corporate spirituality to advance technology and try to keep up with what technology is spiritually so I, I call it corporate spirituality technical spirituality whereas some of us and we need to strip away all of these well this this is an easy a easy um something easy to, to inform them it's like this they call it going green but there's nothing green about it with all this technology and innovation so oh, oh, a, a oh, lot my- of people my bad. They said they couldn't hear me. No, I was basically telling him that a lot of our teachers are pushing for the technology. They bait. Hold up, divine being, because I want to hear you say this while we close out. There's a lot of teachers in the in the conscious community, and and I don't know if he know, divine notice. I'm sure he do. They're saying, look, technology is what it is. The universe is expanding. We need to embrace AI. We need to incorporate with it this basically spiritual transhumanism, corporate spirituality, technical spirituality, where we're incorporating phone apps and technology into our consciousness experience or spiritual experience. I'm against that. And apparently divine being is too. So I'm going to let him build on that. Go ahead. It's funny because that's what the Christians are doing. It's called the Mormon Transhumanist Society. It's a real Mormon Transhumanist Society. They're saying that God created us uh, like him so we can do what he did. God created man. And if we're made in God's image, man can create man in his image. We're doing, the Mormons are trying to justify that they can create an artificial being just like, because we're meant to copy what God did if we're his reflection. And, and Jesus lived forever and he, 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 uh, he defied death. So they want to try to defy death as well to be Christ-like. So they're trying to legitimize transhumanism with Mormonism. It's crazy. And, but uh, and, yeah, go ahead. It's deep, man, because 
This is why we see the church aligning with the modern scientific agenda, because where science is going is stepping into the realm of consciousness and spirit. And now you need the theologians and all the people that's in that lane to come morally sanctioned and say, yeah, this is a good thing. It's OK. God did it. You can did it. And ain't that's what the serpent said. Ain't that's what Lucifer said. In heaven to the other angels, God is smart. Why he don't want you to be smart? God, did, uh, you know, it was that kind of. Yeah, this this is the great reset. I call it the yeah. great deception. Yeah, yeah. the great deception. They're leading us astray, saying, come here for safe, for safety, for salvation. But nature is true salvation. They're just, they're just going to lock you in a box and call it a fake reality. But I want to say this because I know we're going to end soon. Um, Take your time. Mm -hmm. It's a. Uh, the going green aspect is nothing green about it. Going green, uh, they're, they're saying like, it's this. A lot of people will say technology will, like robots controlling everything will give us humans more time to do free things. Like if robots are doing the jobs, we have more free time to just be in our backyards. But what kind of world is that if your backyard has a 5G tower in it? That's, that's what they're not thinking about. They think, oh, technology is just going to appear with no consequences and we can just live our lives in nature while the robots do the job. Nature will be replaced so there will be no nature to go to while these robots are taking the jobs because the robots need 5G high-speed internet to operate. So all the, they're saying technology is going to give us more free time to be more spiritually. How can we evolve more spiritually through technology? It can't be done. You're gonna, your, your spirituality is only going to decrease the more you increase technology. You can't have both. That's what they don't know, Brother Sanchez. And it's critical to understand that. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, you're talking to a wall when you talk to these people. It's going to evolve you spiritually. How? If you're replacing all of nature with technology, there's never going to, it's going, you're going down instead of up. It, it's just, I, I, they just don't see it because they're not familiar, because they don't do the deep research of what's actually coming. I, I mean, I can talk about smart toilets, cyber synthetic trees. These people have no idea that their sensors, they're going to be everywhere. They, they might as well. What they want to do is make it rain a bunch of smart dust so that everything is on the yes. GPS. Yes. Yep. That's what they want to do. Man, you've been, bro, all of my videos where I really can go into that deep, I had to put them on my exclusive store for free for people because they was blocking it. If we really go into when we inhale that stuff, I tell y'all what, this is going to be a to be continued. I'm going to end the show right here. I'm going to keep talking with Divine Being. We're going to work something out to where we're going to keep uh, make this a second home for this brother to promote his channels and all that because um, I want to pick his brain some more about different stuff. This is a passionate brother. I like the energy, and apparently my following does too. So let's drop a bomb. That's why I choose my guests carefully. So salutes to Divine Being. All of his links is, is available for you guys. Um, I'm going to 